This episode of No Simple Road is brought to you by a new sponsor. You guys haven't what heard is, this one a million times. What, what is this one? Well, we're proud to be sponsored by CBD Vermont. Yay. Yay, CBD, CBD Vermont. CBD Vermont. So these guys are super cool, man. There's a lot of CBD products on the market. Yes, and there, there is a lot of different products out there, but... These guys partner with organic farms in Vermont, and, and they hemp derived. Yeah, CBD. yeah, they produce organically grown hemp used in full spectrum extracts. Available for sale at cbdvermont.com. You can use the code No Simple Road to get fifteen percent off all of their products. They guarantee their farms a price per plant and provide uh, cultivation support through the growing season. There are a lot of CBD products out there, so how do you know what you're getting? Well. CBD Vermont tests all its extracts to ensure you're getting the right amount of CBD and other cannabinoids and no unwanted toxins. You don't want toxins in your CBD and these guys are watching your back. Plus, each batch is traced to the Vermont farm where it was grown and the hemp cultivar that it was extracted from. They've recently launched an online store where you can buy Vermont made CBD products including oils, capsules, edibles, and topicals that have been fully vetted by the staff at CBD Vermont. And look, Mel and I have been struggling this past week with some pinch nerve shit. I know, both you, of us. You'll you'll like hear how, about how, this. Pinch nerve. It's so weird. But our go to has been that C B D Vermont and they the Doterra Deep Blue and Ice and Heat Pack. This C B D Vermont has come in super handy this week. So mm-hmm. go to CBDVermont.com and use the code No Simple Road at checkout and get fifteen percent off. It will soothe your body. Get yourself a maple lollipop, my favorite. Yep, do that. CBDVermont.com, no simple road. I listen to Nugs all the time. I listen to Nugs all the time. I listen by default. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Nugs.net is the destination for live music on demand. They have a growing collection, over 15,000 full length concert recordings from bands like Disco Biscuits, Railroad Earth, Humphreys McGee, Goose, Pigeons. Dead and Company, Pit. Pig- Pigeons. Yeah, pigeons. Oh, pigeons play, playing, playing ping pong. Playing ping pong. Yeah. Yeah. You're never going to run out of live music to explore. You can listen to a show from last night or 40 years ago. We have spent the last month or so listening to Dead and Company on there. It's been pretty awesome. So I'm just saying, Nugs is the way to go. It's available on desktop, iOS, and Android apps, Sonos, and Blue OS. Just like us, the people over at Nugs.net are live music fans. So they're offering the No Simple Road family a 35% discount 35. on an annual subscription. 35%. Not 15 or 10. 35. Some wow. d- th- like, yeah, a third of the price they're hooking us up. Go to Nugs.net forward slash No Simple Road and sign up today. If you're already. A subscriber to Nugs.net. Give it as a gift. You can hook somebody up. I you got can. a gift of it. It's the best yeah, gift. Yeah. And they're going to think you paid full price, but you're going to have used the promo code No Simple Road, and you've gotten 35% off, and you look like a hero. So just saying, Nugs.net, man. It's a way to go. Take care of your ears. Hey now, family. Hey. <laughs> so, <laughs> she said, hey. He's part of the family. Now. So this episode of No Simple Road is brought to you by Define Premium Cannabis. Define? Define. D-E-F-Y. Why? Why? Because we smoke weed. Uh, N-E. I love it. So come on over to Define. We have two locations. Where are they, Apple? One is in Hillsboro, and that's Where's where the other I one? work at. And the other one is in Forest Grove. Oh. So come on out, visit us for all of your medicinal cannabis needs. We have or your awesome recreational flower or recreational. I almost said recreationable. Yeah. What the? Hell? I do that all the time you when do. we that's a do tough word recreationable. For you. It's because you smoke weed. Anyway, sorry. Come, come out and visit us. Visit me. Come into Hillsboro or Forest Grove. Mention you listen to No Simple Road. You will receive ten percent off your purchase and a free T-shirt. And a free T-shirt. A free T-shirt. So Ryder's not here. I had to do it. So come on in and get an education. Our bud tenders are very well versed in all the products. We are constantly adding new products. Like and, what? Uh, well, just new tinctures, new companies. We're going to be making lollipops pretty soon. Oh, shit. Just, there's there's going to be new things. We got a line of our own tinctures coming out soon. I heard through the grapevine that there is a 
something happening for the 4th of July, too. Yes, if you come in on the 4th of July all day, we will be having 20% off sale. So come in and visit us. Don't forget to mention you listen to us, No Simple Road, get that 10% off, and a free t-shirt. So wait, you can take that t-shirt that they give you with you when you leave, obviously, because they gave it to you. Yeah. And then... Three days later, when you run out of weed and you want to go back to Define to buy stuff, you can put on that T-shirt that they gave you for free yes, and wear it to the store. Yes. And when you walk in with that shirt on, they will give you 5%, 5% off your discount. Off. So they're giving you a, a coupon that coupon. you can wear. Yep. That's pretty cool. I like it. But, but if what? you go in on the 4th of July, you get 20% off what? your weed that day. That's pretty Do tight. Do it. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's a freaking great deal. Do Two it. locations to serve you. One in Hillsborough, one in Forest Grove. Define premium cannabis. Tell them you listen to No Simple Road. Say hi to Apple and take care of, of your, your head. head. You guys. What? This episode of No Simple Road is proudly sponsored by... Shop, Shop Tour Bus. <laughs> what was that? That was, that was okay. Let's do it again. Shop, Shop Tour, Tour Bus. bus. <laughs> Go to you Shop said, Tour this, Bus. Uh, this is all you, Mel. And then, and then, and then we, we just sit here not. like a couple of idiots and then we bumble <laughs> in. Go to Shop Tour Bus online or at Shop Tour Bus on Instagram. Uh, Aaron and I didn't rehearse this. And he wants me <laughs> when to do we ever rehearse anything? Well, because you i don't know <laughs> just go <laughs> i can't can, i like it so go on over to shop to yeah. your best thank get you your Apple. grateful dead inspired t-shirts there is some awesome designs out there and also they put a whole lot of intention into these you'll get a custom one-of-a-kind box you will get your t-shirt wrapped up all nicey Nicey. Oh, nicey. It is nicey. It is nicey. And it's uh, wrapped in some kind of a picture or article or something that's dead related with the special twine that's magical that they use. They throw in all kinds of little chotkeys, gigas, and action now, figures, pieces of candy. If you order 50 bucks or more, they're going to put an extra cute thing in there. What is it, is, What is the cute thing? A little miniature bus enamel pin with a lightning bolt on the oh, door. That's oh, cool, man. So I want cool. one. It is so cute. Everybody loves pins. Vests, Everyone loves lanyards, pins. hats. My hat loves pins. It told me. It does. It does. You don't like getting hit in the head. With oh, your... those little rubber <laughs> backs. If those metal backs are on your pin oh. and you hit oh. your head... It's over. Yeah, get the rubber backs. Get the, the rubber, rubber ones are way to go. And that's what that's what the shop tour bus has mm-hmm. is the rubber backs. So, Grateful Dead inspired merchandise, intentionally and lovingly designed by the folks over at Shop Tour Bus, and they are giving the No Simple Road family free shipping. If you put in the promo code No Simple Road at checkout, you don't pay one red cent mm-hmm. for shipping, and that is a collo collo. God damn it, collo. I can't colloquial s- a colloquialism. I can't say the word. That's a saying that actually means something. Red scent. <laughs> Why? Because scents are red. Look at the. They're, never mind. All right. Wow. So you don't have to pay for shipping. They're hooking you up. You know, it. You got to take care of your body and and your mind and your ears, and then you got to take care of your wardrobe too, guys. So we've got you covered with all of our sponsors. Yeah, use your CBD on your bad shoulder <laughs> while you smoke your weed from Define. And listening listening to, nugs. to Nugs. And wearing your cute shop mm-hmm. tour Get your bus CBD shirt. Vermont. There you go, guys. Yeah. So head and over to what? Shop tour bus also takes care of your ears. I was remiss in forgetting oh, the, the boot bootleg. Leg. You get the bootleg, which I especially love. I'm the only person in this household that has a cassette player in their car. I still have well, mine you that guys, I haven't listened hey, to. You guys all have Bluetooth and all that fancy <laughs> stuff We're, like that. Because I'm fancy, motherfucker. I can pop in a bootleg and listen to it. I've got everybody in the house's bootlegs are in my car because nobody else has we can't to listen to them. to them. But it's still cool to get them in the in the, your package. Even if you don't have a tape player, it's still a little bit of magic that comes to you in the mail when you order from Shop Tour Bus. Sure you have to search for a cool little recorder mm-hmm. to listen to. Or it. call Apple and he'll come pick you up and you can listen to it in his yeah, car with him. Yeah, we have fun cruising in my car listening That's to right. Yeah, if you're in Maine, call Apple. Definitely call him. So, Shop Tour Bus <laughs> online or at Shop Tour Bus on Instagram. Put in the promo code No Simple Road. If you want to give a message to a friend, you can also put that in the notes when you check out. And Shop Tour Bus is going to give you. More than you bargained for. More than you bargained for. No simple road. No simple road. No simple road. No simple road. Oh, Cyrus.
Hi, I'm Ben Sawyer, and I'm the co-host of the Road to Now podcast on the Osiris Podcast Network. Each week, my partner Bob Crawford and I speak with experts to discover how history has shaped the politics, culture, and economy of the world we inhabit. I'm a history professor and stand-up comic, and Bob is a founding member of the Avett Brothers with a deep knowledge of history and theology. Together, we work to bring history to the public in a way that is informative, accessible, and, we hope, entertaining. You can find the Roads Now podcast anywhere you get this Osiris podcast or on our website at www.theroadtonow.com. That's www.theroadtonow.com. We hope you'll join us on the road and that you thoroughly enjoy this episode of our fellow Osiris podcast. So the thing I like best about re-recording an entire intro <laughs> is that I already know what we're going to talk about. <laughs> it could go that way or it could go a well, totally yeah, different that's way. Not, yeah, there's well, a guideline. I definitely but, leave things out. Do you? Yeah. I'd be an awful actress and be like, yes, one more time, just like that. And I'll be like, mm uh, Hey, now, the- <laughs> No Simple Road family. Did it earlier this time. So we recorded an entire intro, commercials, the whole thing. And it had a click in it. So here we are again. Like it never happened. Never Clickless. Happened. Marco Benevento, Clickless. people. That's Welcome what's happening Marco right now. Benevento to the No Simple Road. Porch. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, well, we went, well, we, we went we, to him yeah, on we, this we, one. We went to his porch, actually, mm-hmm. for real. Yeah. So we took a trip down to Eugene. It was Cuthbert's porch, really. Yeah. I guess we didn't he was Marco's borrowing house. the porch yeah. for the day. So we took a trip down to Cuthbert and... To go see Joe Russo's Almost Dead, and because of Ke- our buddy Kevin, we Kevin. got to talk to the one, the only, Marco Benevento. It was it was really cool to go backstage before the show and get to sit with him without the pressure of, like, we need to hurry up and do the in- interview. Do the intro. Do the interview. It was very relaxed. There was no, like... No stress once we got there and, and got in and got set up. Everything was just chill. Marco is... We always remember it that way, but there was quite a bit of like rushing and craziness prior to get to there. That. Yeah. And then when we get there, like you're still like in that for like the first few minutes of the recording. And then there's like a little release button that happens when you're like, okay, yeah, I can finally mm-hmm. like relax. And... Okay, I don't feel like I have to ask him a thousand questions. We can just let this go natural. And like, <laughs> it, there's like this certain thing that happened. And, and I, I remember feeling it like it was like, okay, like we can like relax, release the freaking tire pressure and just, <laughs> l- yeah, just like get to know him. And he was great because he just had a lot of things to say. And well, he's an interesting guy. And he, yeah, well, very super interesting and like, he really thought about the questions too. Like he didn't just answer. Mm-hmm. Like he was very cognizant of what he was saying, and that's how he plays too. Like he's like cognizant. That's true. Because he, he practices so much. Remember, he was talking about in during the podcast that he, um, like, most people will go to their job and they go home and they don't want to, anything to do with yeah. their job. Anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he goes home and he has a studio and he still goes to play and practice. And because of that, his children have grown. Yeah, plays with um, his kids. Yeah, they, they've grown for a love, um, have a love of music and stuff. So like, that's cool. a really amazing thing to pass on to your kids. Yeah, the is love the of love music. of music. Seeing Simon playing the bass mm-hmm. is so cool. Like, it, it makes me so proud of him. In a in a way different way than anything else that he does. It is the coolest thing to hear him because yeah. not too long ago it was video. You'd hear him in their cursing, video games screaming at video games. Yeah. Now you hear him in their playing. Yeah. yeah, and it's cool to hear. And that. it sounds good. It's not like I I remember when I was younger playing the saxophone, like <laughs> practicing at home, and I know I was torturing my mom. I know it for sure. It was just but you know you're honks. not. Because I'm going to tell you why. Because no matter how shitty it <laughs> sounds, that's your kid putting practice into something other than bullshit. And that's that true. That is the sweet sound of beauty into any mom's ears. And yeah, it may, like I said, it may literally sound like shit. But when your kid is practicing and you're paying for lessons or you bought that instrument and they're doing it, that is the best. Mm-hmm. 
that's that i guess that's true yeah it is. but hearing him play in his room like he sounds so awesome and then you know thinking about marco all he, when he's on tour like he's out just pouring it out every night and then to think that like the thing that he wants to do when he goes home and the kids have gone to bed and everything is chill that what he thinks about is you know what i'd like to go play right now like that's that that's says an something. Obsession. That's a that's like that thing that happens to. I mean, not maybe not every single musician, but like especially the touring musicians. There's something that they have in common that they want to play more than they don't. Yeah, I I think that that is part of the thing that makes them as great as they are is that obsession. Yeah, because it's so comfortable at that point. It's so and second nature. And they're like we're just talking about. They're constantly practicing, even though we look at them as like master musicians and everything which they are they're constantly learning and practicing Mm -hmm. and honing and so is that the thing like i I mean i i always thought about it like i I use Jimi hendrix as a example like Jimi hendrix go play a show and then to think of him practicing afterwards i would never have dreamed but that how, that was a thing, but I'm sure that's did. all he did. Well, there's been a whole lot of release tapes of Jimi Hendrix's and stuff where he was just recording on a reel to reel in his hotel room. And how do you just, get you know, good if you don't practice? Yeah, even if you're a master, that's and, true. And if you're not open to learning, and somebody like Marco too, like he is really into sound. Oh, yeah. as a thing and and oh my god, finding his ear was trained. Yeah, you guys will hear about it's that. It's super cool, yeah. but really into it so he's constantly playing i don't mean like playing music like it's like a game for him to dig into the music and dig into the sounds and and do all that like that's super play fucking cool yeah and play yeah and i can't wait till the new album comes out it's the new album's called let it slide and it comes out on 9 20 it's available for right now for pre-order and you'll hear the the song the title track from it as we go out of the interview and but, you gotta look up and watch the video it's super mm-hmm. fun they are having so much fun it's kind of yeah. like retro right yeah yeah all right so that's that's what's going on this week man sitting backstage with marco at the Cuthbert Amphitheater the day before their first show of the tour. And I think that we will be seeing Marco and J rad out West more often after the response that they got in Washington and Oregon in this tour. I mean, yeah. Sold out shows. And I just got to say how special this one was to us. Cause we got to see a whole lot of our friends. Oh my gosh. We, we ended so up there, did. got down there went and saw Dave and Laurel and the baby and which they're so special. Yeah. Those like, two are awesome. That couple. Uh, what? She just, they're, they're very beautiful people. Like, mm-hmm. It's very special to me. One that you and Dave known each other for so long and he just is he feels to me the, as familiar as like anybody else in the family like oh there's yeah. you know there's Ryder there's Apple and, we, and it's cool we whatever. didn't talk for a long time too I know and the other day I was downstairs um, in my room and I had like picked up our guest book because <laughs> we have a guest book <laughs> we do we have a guest book and so if you stay here you have to sign it because it's so fun there's so many there's silly drawings and all kinds of cool stuff but um anyway i opened up a random page and i read the whole thing and at the end it was dave's dave's message and he was like it was for my birthday and he was just saying how grateful he was to be part of our day Mm -hmm. and um spending time with us and how he's so happy to be back into your life and yeah i just want to send a special shout out to them because they just welcomed us so much they were like come come by when you guys get to Eugene and have coffee and hang out. And, they are, they're and so comfortable. Did. That's family. Yeah. yeah, man. We always fucking roll deep too. Yeah. And they put up with all our shit and all our people that we have with us. Always. And always. And then they, okay, so then that was awesome. And then we meet up with um, Jason and, uh, Jake and Bryn and Jason and Aubrey at the Audrey. show. Audrey. I'm sorry. Aud- sorry. Apple's I, polluted. I, I, I know he's that. polluting me because I know Audrey, but anyway, um, Audrey, 
so we meet up with them at the show and then we see Dane and his, his little babies. angels and just we had such an entirely great time spending time with Jason and Audrey and Jake and Brent after the show walking back to the hotel. <laughs> that was a hell of a fun and walk they, too. Yeah, oh they, yeah. They <laughs> sent those pics and I think Jason like kind of like mocked him up a little bit or it was just cute. Uh, I fun. had no so idea fun. where we were. Oh no. Zero. That's I, funny. All the whole the whole group of grown adults and we went mm-hmm. the wrong way a couple times and we just <laughs> laugh. No and they're clue. like, okay, we gotta go back that way. I just you know what's so funny about me? Like I just never count on anybody trusting me for major decisions. <laughs> so I, I just go wherever. <laughs> you, was, you and Jason led the way, I think, didn't you? And I don't well, even know how he knew where we were staying because we didn't see him in the daytime and I didn't tell him. I don't know, but he all he did was put on that music. He put on freaking 24, 24 Carat. carat. <laughs> Shout out to you freaking Bruno Mars. I love you. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know I love you. You know. But yeah, so we jammed to 24 for care magic and next thing you know it was like that was like taking the um magic carpet <laughs> to, well, to it was like room. taking the magic carpet to my bed because we were sitting in the hotel room and the next thing i know i open up my eyes and everybody's gone i guess i just passed out yeah. while i was talking yeah. <laughs> we did we had a, and then jake well was we hung crazy. out for hours it was yeah. like three it was hours, hours or so because I me mean, i remember me and jake were having a smoke session out oh, on yeah. the balcony for like an hour just it, oh, yeah. that's one cool thing about living in oregon that's rad is you guys could just sit outside on the deck of the hotel that we were staying at on the balcony and just, smoke out. And nobody's going to mm-hmm. say shit. No, huh? somebody will ask for a hit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah. No, what you smoking? I got some of this. And what that, you got? that whole trip was the start of something big for us. So what do you mean? we've got a couple of really big things happening. Uh, why coming was it up. the start, though? Because that's where Jake really put the pressure on for us to go to Summer Meltdown. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Oh, that's I where didn't... he started, like, turning the screw. Well, Jake always said that he was going to get us to go. Like, we weren't going. <laughs> we weren't going. You and I were not going. I was no, kind you of guys settled. were never going. No, I was settled because I don't want to take extra time away from the kids and their birthday during the summer, blah, blah, blah. And on our way home, Aaron broke under the pressure of Jake's voice well, I was in like, his head. I was like, <laughs> you know what? I mean, just because Mel's not going doesn't mean that I shouldn't go and I should do it because no simple road should be at, at summer meltdown. And then Jake was like, you should just write them and see, see if you could pull it off. And I was like, okay, well I'll leave it up to the universe. I'll well, send an email and see nothing, what happens. There was like a, a easy thing that if you decided to volunteer or if you were a vendor, if you were media or if you were me- like something, if you had some reason to like a class to teach or something, then you could get free tickets to go. So that's what you were going to do. But I, it but was already missed, closed. The you missed the deadline the night that we were night. Down there. Yeah. So that, I sent an email to the, to the promoters <clears throat> letting them know who we were and asking them if they would like us to be there. And officially, No Simple Road is now the official podcast of Summer Meltdown 2019. Let's hear it. Woo! Let's hear it. Yay! Yay! We are going to be podcasting from Summer Meltdown August 1st through the 4th in Darrington, Washington. We're going to be podcasting live from the stage there. That's a first for us. We're going to be yeah. podcasting from a festival, like legitimately on the, on the stage, stage, talking yeah. to the festival goers there and hearing about their experiences of summer meltdown and telling them our story and introducing ourselves. That's going to be rad. Yeah. So we're going to have a whole new audience after summer meltdown, because if you happen to already be going to summer meltdown, then great come meet us come say hi to us give us a story but if you're not there we're going to record all these people's experiences our experience mash it up into some awesome show and, and you guys play get it. to be there yeah, with you us you guys get to be there so come on down and, and not for nothing fun. we're going to be talking to greg from pigeons playing ping yeah. pong in a week leading up to that we're going to be so uh, getting you guys excited. We're going to be watching Tipper and Umphreys McGee, Shook Twins, Grateful Shred. There's going to be some amazing, amazing music, music happening yeah. in that bluegrass. I think it's the Darrington Bluegrass Music Park is the name of the place. And it's like it started off with one band. It's at the base of a glacier in this park like setting with a river next to it. You can float. 
kayak. Oh, float. There's dude. hikes all around there. Yeah. But you know what, guys? What? Before that. Oh, we have something else. Right, we have a little, little something happening. We also happen to be the official podcast of Northwest String Summit. Summit, Summit. Wow, you guys. I'm so excited about Northwest String Summit. I was um, looking, at, trolling, on, <laughs> is that what you call it? Trolling. trolling. Their Instagram page. You were page. creeping. And slow I was just, creeping. yeah, slow creeping. And I was looking at the picture, like what the stage and everybody, like with their, like, festival uh, blankets down their attire their hula hoops and it just looks so cool especially after going there with nothing going on that's what i was gonna say seeing it like bare and then i went back to the instagram page and saw all the pictures with like the bands on stage and everybody's camps up and it just I'm, i'm excited i'm super excited about it going to horning's hideout with nothing happening there last weekend Mm-hmm. And walking around there and just feeling the energy of the area and it's seeing beautiful. how beautiful it is oh, yeah. and meeting the people that own it and just all of it walking around there. It, it gave me a completely different perspective than seeing the posts on Instagram. And I hope that we will be um, speaking with the owners of the land um, for the show because that would be a really awesome piece of history because I have heard some history about that um, the Hornings right. hideout and I would love to like, yeah that would be cool story. Well, you I'm sure we you could pull mentioned it, it to her yeah. on the way out the gate I did so. I, I asked if she would be willing to be on the show so I'm going to spark that and we've conversation got, again when I see her we've got a tentative with Dark Star Orchestra that's going to be right we've got a confirmation from the infamous string dusters Yay. we have um shit uh the shook twins are going to be there the rumpke yep. mountain trampled boys are going to yeah. yeah we yeah we have a confirmation with eric from trampled by turtles what's up brother hope you're listening and uh a few other little little surprises in the works for y'all so that's going to be a hell of a weekend and if you're like god i'd really like to be there but i don't have money for tickets oh yeah you Up guys? until this next Friday, you have a chance to win two three-day passes. Go over to At No Simple Road on Instagram and look for the post that says Ticket Giveaway for Northwest String Summit, and you can win a pair of passes. What you do is you follow Northwest String Summit as a new follower. You follow No Simple Road, and you tag the person in the comments of that post that you'd like to go to the show with. We're going to assign random numbers to all the comments. We're going to pick four of those random numbers. We're going to lay those random numbers on our driveway and put dog biscuits on each number. And then we're going to let Darwin pick the winner on Instagram Live. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love it. Yeah. I this love is the Darwin. second pair, too. So congratulations to, um, was it? Sacred Groove. Yeah, Sacred Groove. She won a pair of tickets. And yeah. hopefully, um, Sacred Groove, please. She's going to come, gonna come yeah, hook up with come us. Hook us um, hook up with us at our booth so we can do a little interview. Our what? Our booth, you What guys. are you talking about? We're going to have a booth at the vending area next to the further bus, you guys. So the further bus is going to be there because it's the 50th anniversary. No, and no it's no. the 50th anniversary of... Of, of Woodstock. No, well, that too. That it's the 50th anniversary of uh, Oregon Country Fair. It's also my 50th anniversary since we're throwing... There's a lot know. of 50th anniversary. But the further <laughs> bus is going to be there. <laughs> For, okay, maybe that last thing I would... You got excited. It's okay. okay. I did get excited. Keep going. Well, it was a 50th anniversary. <laughs> Whatever. Keep going. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to be up there. Sh- we're going to have our own booth, and we want you guys to come by. We're going to be there as much as we possibly can, because mm-hmm. we're going to have fun, too. But if you happen to catch us there, we want to do some little, um, like, you know... Tell us your story. Yeah, a little story time. Um, you know, did you like the band the night before? Uh, what kind of costumes you wearing? What you what you eating for lunch? All <laughs> kinds of fun stuff. It, look, if you want to be part of the magic that is Northwest String Summit, yeah, that is the one way that you could do it. Other than being there and dancing and adding your energy to the musical flow of things, we are going to be creating an audio documentary of what it's like to attend this festival and documenting it for historical purposes for the festival itself so if you come over and you know let us use your voice and your mind for a little while and talk to us we'll add it into that little audio documentary and you will be forever immortalized in that festival at that time and i really want to hear some of the people like we said people that have been there before because jake and brand have been there a lot of times i mean that place has some history this festival has some history Mm -hmm. and it'd be awesome to hear those stories and 
can't wait to be with all the family there. There's going to be another gonna family. Be all eight, you know, there's going to be kids. It's going to be just. I hope a that blast. my popped rib and your shoulder are better by then. You know, if we play our cards right, it will be. But if we fuck around, it won't be because these are the kinds of injuries that need rest. It has been a rough week around yeah. this house, man. Yeah. Tuesday, I was walking in a great mood. Sun was shining. Weather was sweet. Was walking with my crew at work That's been sweet weather. and was strolling down a little hill and I took a breath in and my rib dislocated in my back. It slipped out somehow. But you didn't know it. At no, time. I was just like, oh, that felt weird. And then ended up in the in the kitchen at work because somehow I thought if I got something to eat, that would make it go away. And I was in there. I think that's a weird human thought. That sometimes I'm mean, ready to eat. You do it when you have a cold. You do it when you have. You know, so it, stupid. Food. But I'm in the kitchen at work, and that shit took me down to my knees. Like I didn't think I could get back up. And this lady that works at my job, she comes into the kitchen, sees me down on my knees, holding onto the counter, and just started whistling and turned around and walked the fuck right back out. Like I'm not having nothing to do with the weird hippie sweating and pain over in the corner. And that was that. I was like, oh, shit. Ended up at the chiropractor a few days later. And he's like, yeah, dude, your rib has slipped out. And you said you did that when? I was like, um, I think it was Tuesday. This is like Thursday afternoon. And he's like, dude, when this happens, people are in the emergency room or in here within an hour. What is wrong with you? I was like, mm, I don't know. I'm <laughs> <don't know. laughs> so stubborn. Then Mel, did you just wake up with it? What happened? Well, I was at work on Friday night, no, Thursday night, and I was kicking ass. I I was kicking ass, and I know my at the end of the night, my right arm was just like a little tired, a little sore. My shoulder, sometimes it feels like it pops out of socket, so it just kind of felt a little weird. And then the next morning, I woke up, and I literally could not move. So that actually was Friday night, because... I couldn't move it yesterday. Hmm. Oh no, it was Friday morning because I went to yeah, the you chi- were- yeah I went to the chiropractor, and he was actually able to give me an adjustment the same same place as Aaron went day before. He gave me <laughs> he gave me an adjustment. We're becoming grandparents. I know, and I was actually able to move my arm where I couldn't before. So I was like, great. So I went to work, and that night I worked like normal. Um, took mild precautions on my sensitive arm and woke up and just knew I could not go like yesterday was was so bad I I, I gotta say too that like not just because they're sponsoring the show this is for real like that CBD from CBD Vermont has come in so crucial through all this for us man that stuff has made me be able to rest yeah I I I've been dousing myself with the roll on and <laughs> dousing been, like, well, I mean, yeah, I've been kind of walking around the house with it and my deep blue and the topical too, like, or the oral, I should say, it's just been really challenging because it's the I'm, weirdest with Mel yeah. too. Like we said, Mel, it's all you listeners know. She is, like she's tough. Always, always on. She's tough. <laughs> she's positive. And to yeah. see her, you, you look lost yesterday. Oh, I was, you just look like a you look like scared. a six year old little girl that had like lost its but you just Yeah. It's tough I've to never... see that in people you love and Aaron mm-hmm. has been the same this week. I, it's I, tough, I, man. I said that earlier. This is the first time I like kinda saw a gr- we joke around grandma and grandpa. Well they they, it's they a, need yeah. your good vibes and yeah, love. Man. It's <laughs> a trip to to realize how much I do. Like I'm not tooting my own horn. No. I'm, I'm just saying, like when it's I was not yeah, not thing. feeling good, and then not being able to do the things that I normally do, and also like it removes the desire to do shit because you're not right mm-hmm. in yeah. your head. And like yesterday, there was no there was no fun that happened on the porch at all yesterday. <laughs> That's which weird. is unusual. Yeah, we are all in. So you said it this morning. You're like, I'm sick of being inside. I, yeah, we I can't be in there anymore. We all spent day inside yesterday. Yeah, and, and our house is really a fun place to be. Like there's dun, always dun, dun, activities. Dun, dun, dun. There's yeah. books there's to read. Shit there's tarot on. decks. There's coloring books. There's computer. But you and I but, got to spend the whole day on the couch. Yeah, we did. And it was really much needed. And for a short time, I went to go visit or pick up my mom from work. And it was the pain 
threshold was really increasing at that point and then it was hot outside and she she was a half an hour late and like (laughs) there was i was like i was on the verge of crying in the car all by myself and i was like send mel love guys (laughs) well it just it fucking kills man like i like everybody said it's weird like when i'm sick it's different than when anybody else in the house is sick Mm, it's weird when it happens to both of us at the same time no simple road the train is like going at a mile an hour at that point like one of us out of commission everybody else kind of fills in but when when more than one more of us, than, yeah. Down this is yeah. the first time that's happened, man. And I, I have to say, I'm also proud of us for sitting here right now, doing the thing. Yeah. Fuck it, man. And doing it for the second time. Doing it like again. That's funny. Yeah, because yeah, hey. we could both <laughs> stand to just be relaxing. Right it's now. all good. Because I am going to work today to see if I can. You got this. And what's awesome too? That's how much we love doing this. Because oh, yeah. when Aaron said we had wrapped, I went and started laundry. Mel was in cooking. And I when we were cleaning up the kitchen, and Aaron's like, "Guess what, guys? <laughs> I have really bad news." <laughs> I know. And it's like, "Whoa, fuck what?" And he's like, "We got to do it all over again." And for it was like a half a second of like oh that mainly it sucked because we laid down another whole good well, intro yeah, it was and actually everything really good intro. but it was like and we all sat down we're like okay let's do it again <laughs> what are we gonna do yeah. Yeah. No, like, this is our life man yeah, we love making it. up for not being out here yesterday we <laughs> had to do it twice there, yeah, there it is <laughs> yeah just um you know take a moment today and thank whoever your higher being or even if it's yourself for your health yeah your man health, health is health yeah, is crucial yes. yeah thank you hydrate safety third as you go to all these festivals, man, take care of your take care of yourselves. Because if you don't have the body, you can't do the nothing. rest of it. Doesn't fucking happen. So yeah. Yeah. take care of yourselves. And we got something special too today that I forgot to say on the last intro. So I might as well throw it in here now. Okay. At the end of the episode is a trip report from PJ from the Gorge. He took his hard-earned cash and life and stopped everything and flew across the country to come to the gorge and see dead and company with us and there's a Which little report a beautiful really wife cool. and kids back there just like you go do this and he we had yeah. such and a he's time. so fucking rad well, man. and what we didn't talk about on the trip report was like he was so cute i was like so your wife was just like cool with you coming and he was like well she was a little skeptical at first flying across the country yeah. and be with a bunch of weirdos strangers you know and then he was <laughs> like well what if it was one of the podcasts that you listened to and you became friends with them and they invited you on a trip would you go and he said that after that she was totally cool with it and actually <laughs> encouraged it and so i think that's awesome of any spouse to do that mm. it's like yeah man go, go have do fun. your thing go, it's not my thing but that's your thing go for it go have a good time and he did and that's yeah. something he, about he this really family did have too a good time and now when we get out there we're going to you know that's another family that we're yeah. gonna go stay with and visit oh, when we start when we start sweet. making it out yeah. to the you can not just like once but start making it to the east coast and we talked yeah. to fear of a craft beer planet oh yesterday gosh. on their yeah. show doing their <laughs> pre camden fish soiree at Tonewood Brewing yesterday. RJ and Tom were there. We talked to all of them and let them know that it is our um, goal for the next 12 months at some point to make it back east to do some and live podcasts and, Mike, and meet all those guys. Yeah. yeah. Popped yeah. In. And then they somebody were like else. all having so much fun. Right? We had yeah. a lot of people on there and it was just really hard to listen. Because it was hard to hear Yeah, hard on to, our end. Yeah. <clears throat> they were in party mode. Yeah. Oh, dude, the brewery. amount of beers that were on that table... They're and, podcasting and we were all in right pain. in front of the huge <laughs> brewing kegs. I mean, they're like in the middle of the brewery. So, so yeah. yeah, if you saw um, that show, then you were, then you know what's yeah, up. Yeah, you know what's up. And so we got Northwest String Summit. We are the official podcast. We have Summer Meltdown. We are the official podcast. And then Mel and I are headed to Colorado mm. to go see fish at Dick's. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We're so excited. Really excited about and I, I can't wait to meet Annabelle in person too. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah, that's upcoming we have, too. We, we have, have a lot going on, you guys. We have so an incredible interview with Annabelle Lukens <laughs> of Cloud Nine Adventures and the amazing Jam Cruise. That's um, coming up. So you guys are gonna hear a really freaking kick ass uh interview with that and we are gonna catch up with her um at the shows um in at Dick's in yeah, September. Man. So we're going to get healthy. We're going to we're <laughs> going to fix our p- 
popped ribs and pinched nerves and minor aches and sprains and bruises and pinched nerves hurt you guys. Yeah, Hashtag. they do. Hashtag ouch. <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna do this. So I just want to say thank you to all you people out there that have supported us and helped us get to all the places that we've been. And for those of you that are helping us get where we're going, yeah. you can support the No Simple Road family at patreon.com forward slash No Simple Road. That is how we pay for everything. We pay for our hosting and all the stuff that we do. And it's we couldn't do this if you guys didn't partner with us. So those of you that have done it, man, those thank you so you much. Those of you have like our new Patreon subscriber, Annabe- Abigail. Thank you so much, Abigail, for your cute dollars and for supporting us and just showing us love. Yeah, man. That, it, it means even, the world. So much. <laughs> it's not the amount. It's, 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 it's the why, intention behind the thing. That's what I mean. That's why I always say it doesn't matter if it's a dollar or whatever. Like, yeah, man. I was cracking up listening to our intro last week about like sexy dominatrix dollars <laughs> and like all that. <laughs> but seriously, like it really is just the fact that you're like, I'm ponying up even if it's just a dollar or just 10 bucks or as much as 10 bucks, however you want to say it. That's cool that you're putting your credit card number in and every month it's taking it out and sending you a thank you. Yeah, for man getting us where we need to go and it's not for nothing too like when you guys do that it's enabling us to go do all the stuff that we're doing and then you get to be involved too you can come be with us at those things and it's because you got us there that you can interact with us at the shows (laughs) like you did that and then we get to enjoy it together so it's not some like an empty weird thing that just happens you're funding the trip for all of us and that's fucking cool man yeah it's like when you when you decide to like donate to a really good cause like you feel good about it like we're getting we're putting on a show because we're creating this new experience and so you guys are hearing about that and getting more of what you like which is the show it is the show well no i was just gonna say there's a lot of which we try to encourage we need to say it again people we reach out to us is like i saw you there oh and yeah to you. there's a lot of that means just as much the non-monetary things mm-hmm. of like of coming up to it as a show sending us an email calling into the reviews. hotline call it, you know all of that there's so many ways yeah the reviews stuff that doesn't cost money it's just all of us as humans just love to know that somebody digs what you're putting out yeah what you're doing well and, and also we're creating a community and that's how you create the community that's how it cements itself is when we meet each other in person and you can put a face to the instagram handle or the email that you received yeah, and you see the yourself. person and feel their energy and give them a hug and like that's the community that's the we have Giving a new yourself. one you guys all right let's hear it um, a new re- these are the five star reviews right. on apple Podcasts. road tripping is the title and this is by schuler d pdx Y'all crush <laughs> traveling back and forth all summer between Portland, Oregon and Colorado. And I'm very fortunate for the entertainment you guys provide during the long drives on my way back to the Colorado mountains. Now for the grand opening of my new project, Grove street dye works. Go get it at what? the magic beans music festival. Beans yeah. Spot, hosting on site, natural dye workshops on clothing and accessories. And then of course, dead and co at Folsom field. Stoked to bring the wow. energy and love from No Simple Road along for the ride. Aww. Maybe we will cross paths in the back in the Pacific Northwest. It's gonna happen. So dang, thank you yeah, so hit us much. Yeah, up when you're back in Portland. And, and yeah, shout out to Grove Street Dye Works and here yeah. at Magic Beans Festival, which we did get invited to. We did. We couldn't do the it this Rumpy year, Mountain but Boys. next year it's gonna happen. Yeah. So if you happen to be out there for that, awesome. Or if it already passed, I hope you had a good time. And Dead and Company at Folsom. Wow. So, I mean, we're talking about Thank creating you, sure. creating community. And we've done stuff collectively as a family. And I'm not just talking about the three of us sitting here. I'm talking about you guys listening out there have really manifested this with us, all the everything that's happened. And so I just want to put it out there that, you know, as No Simple Road grows and, and we start doing more stuff, what we're looking to do is to be doing more live podcasts and being able to be out at shows doing 
the live thing, like interviewing the band before the show and then you get to see the show. So I'm just putting that out there so that it's in the collective consciousness of the family that you guys can help us imagine that and manifest it into reality. I mean, yeah. it's not a secret. Remember when we talked to, um, gosh, it's so hard to keep everybody straight, but we just did an interview with a couple guys and he was saying that he has... I think it was Goose. Goose. It was Goose. Yep. It had to, thank you, baby. It was... Um, That's the, funny. You didn't say shit. Yeah, I knew two, what you were talking about. It was two guys um, from Goose because you knew you in my head yeah. and you know. But anyway, like um, he was saying that when he finds out things about his certain favorite artists, it does change the music for him too. And it was kind of like a realization we were talking about doing that um, and maybe possibly doing that with them at mm -hmm. some point. And he was saying how strange it was that people would that he's one of those people that people would care to know him better. <laughs> yeah. At, you know, and just think about my thought is that people are so interesting. Yeah. If you have a conversation with somebody, the right type of thing that can come out that would just really like make that person go from like just an average person you would see every day on the street and maybe just nod to, to like, holy shit, he's freaking amazing and like cheering them on. So these um, conversations that we have, it's not just for conversation's sake. It really isn't. Mm -hmm. It's just to really get to know Connection. this person. Yeah, to connect with them and their instrument and their music and their craft and bring it to you. And then it just makes us feel so much closer and get like, instead of like that love that's far away that you can't see, it's like the love that you have for somebody who you're on their team. It really does elevate the experience of listening to the music. This this Marco Benevento interview yeah, did that is show. really one of those things times where meeting the person really exponentially elevated the experience of seeing him do his thing live it oh yeah all night i was paying attention to the keys mm -hmm. all night long so anyway we'll get to it here in a second follow us on all the social media platforms at no simple road go to no simple road.com and sign up on the family tab for the newsletter you can also get your no simple road merch there we have some of the uh at nola deadhead designed gorge 2019 t-shirts left as well as the define premium cannabis wicked awesome mashup biker tees those are up there at no simple road.com in the merch tab stickers. and there's stickers and you guys um wow i just totally lost my train it just completely it. it just you left the fucking just left oh the discord server go over to discord no simple road has a discord server and you guys can interact with each other over there if that's not your thing you can go to r forward slash no simple road on reddit and if that's not your thing you can go to the facebook group the no simple road family ask to join you'll get approved i don't not approve anybody and you will be part of the no simple road family facebook group and now we have your digital world covered in all the corners if that's not your thing write us a snail mail yeah yeah. You could do that, or you could send us an email at info at no yeah. simple road. Call the number. Dot com. Oh, yeah. What's the number? 971 808 15. 24? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she got it. 971 808 15 24. Yeah. Yay. That's our lukewarm line. You can call <laughs> and leave a voicemail. We have a couple on there. I will get them. Um, translated and yeah because there's some funny yeah i'll get it i'll get it happening on the next but episode shout out john b yeah <laughs> johnny bananas john b man and uh that that wraps up the business we are gonna get to the man the myth the legend right now so sit back relax get yourself comfy and take a ride with us in the car on the way to go see j-rad in eugene at the cuthbert amphitheater followed by a pretty amazing interview with marco and then followed by a little trip report from the gorge from pj so hope you guys dig this so without further ado the no sip road crew gives you mr marco, marco benevento. benevento you ready i don't know man you better better turn off the music swim might sue us oh that's oh. true yeah it's <laughs> copyright infringement good morning everybody it's 8.22 a.m. on a Friday, and you're listening to KNSR. What are you trying to show me, Mel? Cancer. I like that. Uh, we Cancer. we just left the house. We are getting on the freeway. Getting on the freeway to... 217 southbound. 217 southbound to the 5, all the way on down <laughs> to Eugene. Oh, 
And that was a good morning sneeze for Melanie. That was a freaking head sneeze. Yeah, so we're headed down to Eugene to see J-Rad today. And we're going to have fun. That's all. That's all I had to say. How about you, Apple? We're going to have a blast. We're going to interview Marco, and it's going to be amazing. We're going to see Dave and Laurel and the baby. baby Hazelnut Hazel. Junebug. You know, it, this is really, I mean, I guess last weekend was kind of the beginning of our summer tour. Yeah. But. Oh, it was somebody's birthday. Yeah. Oh, it's my birthday. Happy oh. birthday, Apple. It's still your birthday month for today. For today. Yeah. So what a great way to end my birthday month. Wow. Last week was Sago, and now Classic tonight with Joe Russo. Classics. Next weekend is um, Dead & Company at the Gorge, and we got people coming into town to go with us. We were talking last night. We got a, a caravan of six cars headed up. That's going to be that's going to be a journey all by itself keeping everybody together. <laughs> Cuz you can't you can't go into the lot separate. You have to follow each other in if you want to camp next to each other. It's going to be a thing. I it is. Nate, uh Big Red One, I was like, "Yeah, it's it's kind of like herding feral cats." <laughs> and he was like, "That's cool, bro." That's cool, bro. I I can totally herd cats. He was like, okay, good luck. We'll see. That's a certain, that's a special set of skills right there. That is. That's that's way, that's more special than Liam Neeson's special set of skills. What was Liam Neeson's <laughs> special set of skills? Oh, he... Finding people. He found people. Well, he also killed people. He was really good at hide and seek. <laughs> <Finding people. laughs> he wasn't as good as Sasquatch. <laughs> that's true. That's the world champion hide and seek person thing cryptid mel yeah. melanie what? are you gonna jump in on this action no because when i talk from the back you can't hear me i don't have anything to say she's looking at that baby of the world mel has nothing to say except for the baby's cute and she she loves his body Your so body's tight. the baby's tight we'll uh we'll be updating you as the day goes on this is just a little hello, good morning, how you doing, how do you do, say what's up, uh, what, what was that all about? I just got a cool email. So, yeah, we're going to head down, we're going to go to Dave and Laurel's house, we're going to hopefully hear from Marco here in a little while and head over to Cuthbert and talk to him for a little while, go relax, get some food, see Jake and Bryn, post up our flag, go hang out outside the venue, relax. Go into the show, oh, dance. Shit, Jake and Bryn too? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, it's happening. So we'll see you guys in a little bit. We'll be back. What? That was fast. That was really fast. The trip down here. Get ready to. One of the good things on a trip is when you're talking and shit, fucking it goes by quick. I know, you don't shut up, dude. Problem. So we're gonna go to Dave and Laurel's house and see Piper and Hazel and Dave and Laurel have some coffee, go hang out, relax a little bit. There is a lot there's a lot to talk about, man. There's it's crazy when your life starts catching up to your dream. Or the other way around. Your dream starts catching up to your life. It's a... It's a weird... Reality to be in. And it... It's like, Mel, it's like you were saying, like... You know where you want to be... But you need to be, like, flexible on how you get there. Oh, yeah, like, just... Having a direction, like... Coming up with our goal having it in mind but knowing that it's not going to be one straight line it's all over the place it may we may have to fly a little bit we may have to crawl a little bit like we just got to be, be flexible that's really it yeah there's just there's it's hard to get back in the, we already said the meat of the company but it's you know you know what though like we were talking about opportunity it's hard to know 
which opportunities are the once in a lifetime opportunities and which ones aren't they all are they all are think about it you don't get the same ones you just get another one a different one you know you don't I mean, I feel like we're well once in a lifetime I don't know I don't think that either once in a lifetime because it's not like somebody's gonna like this like we're talking about going to Red Rocks if it didn't happen dude, it's not gonna be like well fuck them last time uh, I invite them anywhere yeah no I yeah that's true there are many opportunities I just I, it's exciting to think about us being on the road yeah. and pulling into a town and doing a podcast before a band goes on and meeting the listeners in different cities and doing that yeah. doing making it more real than just the porch like bringing the porch across the country <laughs> yeah we are the porch <laughs> we are the porch <laughs> we are the children we, I know we could jackhammer out the foundation of the porch and put it on a trailer just build a replica on yep, a <laughs> yep, and t- take it around the country and set it up. I guess that's not really that crazy of an idea. No. It really isn't. Our, it's, it's maybe just crazy for you because you haven't done it and you haven't thought of it, but it's our progression. It really is. It's, it's inevitable. It's already happening. We're doing it right this very moment. Yeah. That's very true. And it's weird too, like what I was. That's a good point. What Melda said. That's how I feel. Every time we talk about these things, we are doing these things. Oh yeah, it's not. We're, we're not talking it. about stuff that we would like to do. Well, I mean, it's kind of a mixture of both, isn't it? Like I would like to X Y Z, but in we're doing <laughs> A B C. You know what I mean? Like we have. We already have the podcast. We are bringing the porch with us wherever we go. And now we're thinking of the bigger picture of expanding that into it being what we do all the time as far as, like, our... What we do for a living. I mean, I've been saying that on the show for a while now. Like, the goal is to do this full time. But, Get a marathon okay, but, coach. But the, goal, the goal really <laughs> is to have a space to settle down in and to be able to travel whenever we want. A base, a home base. Yeah, we need a home base. We need our, our farm. That's, to me, like our, like if we're talking about our goals, that's my short-term five-year goal. You right, know? yeah, yeah. Two to, two to three-year goal is having that and then whatever else that looks like, having our little freaking RV or our bus or our camper or whatever we have and cruising around doing what we do best it would be so rad to like well okay fish is doing a run back east here we come load up we're gonna be at all the you know they do like um you know after party stuff where bands will play after the show or pre-party stuff where a cover band will play before the show or whatever like we could be doing all that stuff with them no Simple Road is going to be at whatever tap house yeah. after the show and do our thing. But the fact of the matter remains is that we're three miles from Eugene. Today we're going to see J-Rad. We're going to see our family. Yeah. Who would have thought fucking not too long ago that we'd be driving down to Eugene early to go sit and rap with Marco I I mean I thought about that this morning when I woke up I was like when I said to you guys I was like I love our fucking Oregon life we're doing like just fine I woke up this morning had coffee with people I love the most got in the car I'm driving down to see my family go to a concert like when I was living in Vegas this is the shit that I dreamed about someday someday having here and it's here and I'm really fucking grateful for that man it makes me like so proud of us and happy 
and there's there's nothing like in the back of my mind like weighing on me today there's no like well I had to leave that so that I could go do my like I had to sacrifice well not even that like done. even mental stuff yeah, like I have there's no there's no hang up that I'm tripping on that I'm like well I'll think about that later like I, I'm down here clean just here that's good, man. That's a good feeling. And it's a good feeling to be grateful for your life, too. Like, whatever your, whatever your shit is, like, it's really awesome. So, part two. There it is. Pulling into Eugene. Gee. More later. Hey, Eugene. Yeah, yeah it's so nice. So beautiful out. Marco, I'm Aaron. Aaron, what's happening? Nice man? to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yeah, yeah. I fin- finally get to look you in the eye and mm-hmm. say thanks, man. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. This is Mel. Mel. Hi, Mel. Yeah. Marco, nice, nice to meet, to meet you. you. Thanks for taking and time I'm, out. I'm I appreciate Apple. it. What's that? Apple. Apple. Yeah, that's <laughs> my last name. Okay. So, yeah, that's people are always like, do you have a big red head or something? No. <laughs> <laughs> How yeah. much time do we have so we don't take an, you know more than you? Yeah, we want to be respectful, man. I don't know. Um, I mean, it can be all day or anything, but... Yes. Well, settle in. Take off your shoes. <laughs> Sound check. 2.30. Okay. Plenty, plenty of time. Oh, yeah. We got plenty. Okay. Yeah. This place yeah. is pretty amazing, man. This, yeah. this venue is something else. Have you seen the show here? Yeah. We we came here and it was 2016, right? Yeah, 2016. Just July. saw Diane's word here. Who? Diane's word. Oh. Do you uh, know who they are? I can't... Mm. Yeah, we're gonna turn you. We're talking. To Tommy, Tommy's familiar with them. Oh like, yeah, they're, they're from. Intense. They're from South Africa. They're like. Uh, oh. What are they? Well. They like a rap rock. Uh, they, 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 they're electronic they rap. Um, yeah, they're, they're intense. Like all, good, like all good music. Right? It's, yeah. yeah, there's no genre yeah. anymore. Like, mm-hmm. They're from South Africa. You said. Yeah, oh. and they they he raps in like in Afrikaans, English, like, mm-hmm. and they. They're fucking weird as hell. High cool. energy, yeah. like just going yeah, for it. But, but like, <laughs> yeah, cool. did you ever see the movie Chappie? Uh, no. With the robot? No. They're just like, they do their own thing. I mean... They have their own thing called Zeph. Yeah. And Zeph yeah. is like, whatever ask the fuck it, you want. Ask, you know? ask Tommy about it. Tommy, we're just talking to him about it. He loves nice. them. He'll hip oh, cool. you to it. Their yeah. music mm-hmm. videos, everything. He nice. Knew. So what's your experience with playing... In Eugene, last year was the first time that J-Rag came out, right? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. you you have family here, right? Yeah, um, my wife's sister lives in Cottage Grove. Oh, cool. oh okay, yeah, yeah. we have friends yeah. down there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and we made our record with Richard Swift in Cottage Grove. Right. Um, and my wife went to college here in Eugene oh, way wow. back in the day. I mean, well, whatever, yeah. however many years ago, 20, 20 <laughs> years ago. And, uh, That's a good amount of time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we would we would always come through here and play, like, the Wow Hall or right. um, where else? My band played a little a little place in town. I forget. That's what our buddy was just telling us, and I can't remember the name of the place. Yeah. Yeah. Hi-Fi? Yeah. Yeah. Hi-Fi. We played Hi-Fi about a, two years ago, maybe. Um... People in Eugene are special. (laughs) Yeah. This is a special place, man. I remember last year when Dead & Company did their tour afterward, O'Teal posted something on social media and he was like, man, Eugene is like some weird Grateful Dead nerve center kind of fucking weirdness place. Yeah. yeah. Joe was saying how further would start a lot of their tours here. Oh, really? Yeah. And I was like, all right. Yeah. Are you guys just starting or in the middle? Yeah. Oh, right. This is kicking it off. This is kicking it off. What? You got you're so busy, dude. You do <laughs> the Art. label with Kevin, yeah. like your own deal, this, mm-hmm. you're married. Mm-hmm. How do you balance everything, bro? Well, uh it's a good question. <laughs> I don't know how I balance it, but it feels right, it feels balanced. And my whole life has been like this. Mm. So I've always been busy even before I met my wife. Um, it was always like 150 shows a year. It's just how it is. I thought maybe by the time I was 40 and had two kids, it would sort of slow down. <laughs> but it's like the same and same and, pace. and I'm like 
totally fine with it. I mean, you know, I, I miss them when I'm gone, but, um, the kids and, and my wife, but like, right. it works out. And they're cool. Like, Where are she, you based out of? We live in Woodstock, New York. Oh, right on. He yeah. lives up near Kevin. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kevin lives in Kingston. I live in Woodstock. Um, we were in Brooklyn for a while. We needed to get out of the city because... I wanted to get out of the city and just collecting all these pianos and keyboards. Like our apartment just shrunk. It started know? becoming a warehouse. Like, this is like our apartment, and then imagine a piano in here, and then like a keyboard over there, and a drum set over there, and all of a sudden it's like, where do we put the baby? On the drum set. Yes, right. So, and I always knew we'd get out of the city at some point. Yeah. So we got out of the city. We live in Woodstock. We have eight acres of land. Nice. We have a house. We have. I have a side studio. We have goats, Cute. peacocks, chickens. We have a, a, a pond. refuge, man. Yeah, like you when I go home. Spot. How important is that? Very important. It's, yeah, it's and I, I wasn't getting that in Brooklyn. Like I get home and I'd be in Brooklyn and I'd be like, ah, you know, <laughs> yeah. energy in New York City is no. So you're not going to rest, right? Right. This doesn't feel like I'm off. So I we got a nice place in Woodstock and and having the side studio is huge. Like to be able to you know put the kids to bed and uh, and then go to the studio even if it's just for two hours and work loudly. Yeah. Right. You know, um, not bother anybody. No holds barred. Yeah, I don't have to go. take a car somewhere to my studio or go to this, you know, wherever place. I can literally walk out of my door 30 feet to my studio. It's yeah. right there. Um, so I'm always working on music, always r- writing music. Is that how Let records. It Slide? Is that where Let It Slide yeah, happened? Yeah, absolutely. That's where all the demos happened. And then we re recorded it in Queens at Diamond Mine with. With uh, Leon Michaels right. and all those guys, and uh, what a fun yeah. album! Yeah, fun album. It's coming out <laughs> soon. We're well, like we're getting to ready some for of your the stuff new... on re-listen. Oh, cool! And some yeah. of the live shows, and I was listening oh. to Let It Slide, and I was like, "What a f- like nice. fun!" Oh, cool! Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love your presence and just how you... it's just fun. All you guys look like you're it having a blast. Fun. We are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Karina is a really nice, incredibly cool and fun addition to our band. How'd She's, you connect with her? Dave Drywitz was our bass player before Karina. Okay. Oh, okay. And Dave sort of taught her all the songs and was like, Ween's getting back together. It's going to be uh, hard for me to do Marco gigs. Um, you know, would you be into it? And Karina was like so elated to do it and excited. And mm-hmm. I just thought how amazing this was that Dave... He didn't even need to do that, you know. Dave could have just said, "I'm, Sorry, I'm, I'm, got, out. I'm out." That's I, a obviously, solid friend. I, yeah, Dave. Dave and I are Teaching very tight. Teaching his replacement. Yeah, that's legit. And that's yeah, it's legit. Yeah, Dave is an amazing guy, um, and uh, so he taught her all the music, and and she hopped on board. It was super seamless, you know. Um, and very like also wow like now we have a whole new presence on stage like let's get her involved more right. like Karina let's get you a mic let's get I you singing I love the setup because like it's uh, kind of off to the side you know. but she's standing there like yeah. getting and, the party started no, yeah, and she's, she's just it's, it's just like I said it's that's my adjective for it it's like fun it's fun yeah all our music our shows are fun our shows are upbeat dancey uplifting simple um, yeah. you know there's not a lot of heady changes and all sorts of weird things going on it's like casio drum loop with like repetitious bass line with like you know is some that, singing is uh, that the so. stuff that you're listening to when you're just chilling out at home or or is that I stuff that's playing stuff. in here that's stuff that's playing in my head for sure but i also yeah it's just like that's what i like yeah stuff that's playing in my head right but i do i do like i like listen to all sorts of stuff but i like groove oriented music mm-hmm. instrumental music that has turned into maybe music with some words is like kind of like what we're doing you know or oh, like shit, we, yeah. I write instrumental grooves and then add lyrics after the fact I don't have lyrics first and mm, then add okay. music to it okay. you know I'm not like a sort of a, like the band or Bob Dylan or Neil Young like kind of songwriter where it's like you have your story and then you write yeah. the chords to it it's more like let's come up with this cool groove this cool chord progression cool bass line or interesting bass line interesting drum thing and then see what sort of syllables come out when I try to sing yeah. and then make yeah. words to those syllables oh, shit. which I know people do it's not like a foreign uh, yeah. concept to write music like that but um, that's how I kind of do it well, I bet you it could start as a sound too not even lyrics yeah. so like oh. bop, 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 and then yeah, that's like oh I could put a lyric in here very and, true that's exactly how I yeah. and that's like how my songwriting process happens you know. Where was the beginning of your career? Like, how did 
when you were a kid? Like, is mm-hmm. it in the family? Like, the blood? <clears throat> well, yeah, it's in the family. It's in the blood in that my dad loves to sing. My dad loves Italian music. My dad's from Italy. <laughs> came to the States when he was 15 with his whole family. My oh, uncle, sure. my aunt, my two aunts. And, um... And we were raised on uh, Neapolitan music, and my dad right. would always just like whistle me a song and be like, "It goes like this," and they have I try to figure it out on the piano, and then we'd find a recording of it, and I try to learn it. And my uncle played guitar; he was total hippie, loved the Beatles, went to see the Doors at like the Fillmore East. Wow. Like, wow. Like, oh, yeah. So he was like Uncle Frank's, like the cool uncle, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know. We would sing like "Let It Be" and "Hey Jude" and like hang out and play a little, you know, growing up. So that was just what we did on like family hangs, you know, here and there. Um, but nobody was professional with music. Um, I got into it. I, I took piano lessons, and I was really into synthesizers. Mm, My parents yeah. bought me a synthesizer, and I put the headphones on, and I just <laughs> loved it. You know, they bought me a four track recorder. Oh, wow. I had okay. like a they little. They honed it. Yeah, they they. My parents definitely encouraged me yeah. to, to get into it. And then, you know, before I knew it, I met Joe when I was in seventh grade. So I met Joe. Oh. In in middle school in, in New Jersey. So wow. you guys have been brothers. Okay. Oh yeah, Joe and I are like brothers. Okay. Okay. All right. That so makes I've sense. known Joe, um, since I was, you know. So, so my daughter is going to be in seventh grade next year. Okay. My oldest daughter, and she's she'll be thirteen. So I've known Joe since I was thirteen. What? That's, yes. what, that's when I Holy met this crap. guy. Yeah, yeah. Is there so you've known each other since we <laughs> yeah. were thirteen, twelve. Is so, there something that changes the music about that? Because like, okay, you work with a ton well, of yeah. musicians, right? You mean like when we play live? Yeah, oh, right. Because yeah, yeah. it's like almost like well, with your wife, right? Like you've yeah. got a certain connection. Well, you, you have don't a need certain amount anything. of trust, and you have a certain amount of like. History. Relaxation. Well, there's something you're else. You're just chill. You're not like trying too hard. You're just like, yo, you know who I am. Yeah. I know who you are. Okay. Like, let's not try too hard. So that's like the huge, a big plus about being in a band with Joe and about being in this band in general, J Rad. Uh, Joe and I go way back. Dave and I go way back. Oh, wow. Because, you know, we, I've known Dave, um, well, I mean, not way back like Joe, but, you know, Dave played in our Led Zeppelin cover band. I was going to ask you about that. You know, and that's also when I, I met Scott even before that. So, like, there's a lot of history with all of us. I yeah. mean, Joe, obviously, more than anyone else. But uh, there, there is something to knowing somebody for that long, though, man. Yeah. Like, when him and I take psychedelics together, there's a completely different thing that happens with them, with anybody that else that I know because of... Yeah, how long we've known each other? This the telepathy is on another, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you the know, just just, just a finger move. And you, yeah, like, yeah, you know, like, that you, musical that's, telepathy. Yeah, that. well, that, the telepathy, it, it, like immediately makes me think about the duo days because when right. Joe and I were touring as the Benevento Russo duo, there was so much telepathy going on. So musicians would watch us, and like I remember, like um, Ivan Neville mm. came to one of our shows. Oh, wow. In New York, and I, at the Bowery Ballroom, and I just remember him standing like on the stage, like with his jaw was just dropped, just like, "What are these guys doing?" And we were in a in a totally free improvised sort of moment in the song where it was it's full happening. on telepathy, right? You know, like I know what you want to do, you know what I'm going to do, we're going to do, you know, mm, do all this. Stuff. I just fun. remember, yeah, it's very. Cool. I mean, like, are you like jazzed up when it's happening? Like, like oh yeah, completely. Right? You're completely jazzed up, but you're like, you're also completely relaxed, and you're, um, you know, that it's gonna end at some point. Yeah, it's gonna, you're gonna land somewhere where oh, something else wow. is gonna happen. Yeah, it's like so. It's super cool. That's what's super mystic, mystical about yeah. music is that, and that, and those deeper improvisational moments. So you have like, to like be in the moment all the time that's, on that yeah yeah it, goal, yeah. with right? the duo that's how it was and with with J-Rad this is there's moments of of that of lots of telepathy in in my band it's almost like a, a, an opposite thing really yeah where we're we're like playing our songs and we're like we're 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 playing through the set we're playing 25 songs in, mm-hmm. in two hours Versus twenty five songs in three days, which is what J Rad oh, does. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're yeah. we're covering we're covering a lot of ground, and we're like we're kind of doing our 
we're playing our songs. You know, yeah. there's there's imp- there's out. improvisation within some songs, which is great. Yeah, because I was going to say that I've, I've seen mm-hmm. it happen but, um, with you. But the majority of the music, eighty five percent of the music in my band is is just kind of, uh, you know, we know what we're going to do. It's like co- coming up with a good set list is our our okay. sort of so creativity. When you're coming up with a set list, are you telling a story with the set, or is it absolutely okay? Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. not vignettes. Or no, the, no, no, yeah, we're trying to come up with like a, a beginning, a middle, and an end. You know, like uh, trying to engage people. Uh, sometimes we'll do nights where we do two sets, and that's when you can loosen it up a little. You know, you get your first set out of the way, and then the second set, you're like, all right, let's ex- let's stretch this one out. You know, right? So, but anyway, as we were having a conversation on the way down here about just life and having your dream happen kind of thing you know like my dream is fully happening that's <laughs> right and that's say, those, I, that eight acres I, your yeah. studio you got two babies and mm-hmm. a beautiful girl like yeah beautiful Everybody's, wife beautiful, beautiful family, family. <laughs> and my parents live nearby now oh they, God, they, they, they like and you're together one, like, we're together yeah we're, we're on it we're engaged we're, we're like we're very involved in our kids school and in their education and in their uh uh, after school education like they're, they're doing rock academy our kids just did all the music of Tom Petty uh, as a rock academy show oh, and wow. my youngest daughter sang Free Fallen and my what? oldest daughter were you just balling? I was balling yeah, yeah yeah my oldest daughter oh, sang totally crying, right? Girl, and, oh you know, my no God. way so I was like and, and they're, like they're into music as, they're like, into aside music, like, from you or yeah, because no, of you or both? Uh, both, I, okay. I would imagine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, because of me, there's pianos everywhere in the house. <laughs> so <laughs> how could you not bang so on So I yeah. always play all the time. You know, that's the best thing about music is your job. I mean, some people have a job that they go to from 9 to 5 and they don't want to do their job until <laughs> they have to go the next day and do yes. their job. Right. But like I have my job and I go home and I immediately go to my job again yeah. and sit down at the exactly. piano. I love it. But isn't so that what fun. makes you well, music great at it? Is the that thing right yeah, there? Yeah, like, well, every musician is the same way, you know. I feel like at least the musicians in this band, yeah. the musicians I know, associate with. Yeah. No, you're true because with. we've interviewed a lot, and it's always like I couldn't do anything else. Yeah, like, it's that is what I'm yeah, supposed to this be doing. It's not like you're like okay, yeah. now I know music. No. I don't need to like, <laughs> practice anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm good. <laughs> I get it. Sweet. What am I going to do now? So, you're like, okay, I, got, I think I got this music thing down. I mean, when you're like young and you're learning music, you're like, I know how to play Let It Be. I got it. You know, but like, there's so many different ways you can play Let It Be. And there's so many different ways you can play Terrapin Station and the Casey there's so Jones. so many people you can play and, it with. And so many people it's you can different. play it with. Yeah. Yeah. Which, honestly, before I got into this music, I didn't realize that. Yeah. I just didn't. It's because I'm not a musician. I'm a listener, dancer, right? So, like, oh, okay. I never realized that. Like, you, it's the same song, but you can jazz it up, yeah. funk it there's, up. Until yeah. I got into the jam scene, and I was like, yeah. wow. Yeah. Uh, going to school for music was was a big thing you for went me. to berkeley yeah i went to berkeley oh, okay. and studied got deep into jazz and studied with joanne brackeen who's an amazing um jazz pianist and, and educator and uh and studied with all sorts of people kenny warner's another guy i studied with brad meldow who's a pretty heavy modern jazzer um and so i think learning about jazz and improvisation through in the jazz world is like really mind expanding like Coltrane and Bill yeah. Evans and, and playing with Miles, guys like Modesky too you know, and John, John Modesky and, and, and all those guys it's like you know once you tap into that world that's when you realize music is like never ending and you're going to study it forever and there's you know, there's that's where the mystery, that's, that's where the mystery and the mystical side yeah. of it comes in. Is yeah. in that in that space. That's, that's when the mystery Absolutely. happens. Yeah. And that, that's what we've heard too a lot of times. Is is that with jazz? It's it's like, well, I'm no jazz. You know, I'm a musician, but I'm right. no jazz musician. <laughs> right. That's a whole another level. That's another level. Uh, yeah. Like I like knowing that I can get into that world. Like if somebody came, if we had a jam session at my house and it was like a lot of jazzers, I could hang. Like I could talk that language, yeah. and I like I like it. I don't do it that often, but I can. Right on. And it's like a very um, sophisticated, impressive, uh, almost alienating for some listeners because they're like, "What are you doing? I don't even know what this is." But everybody who's playing it is like, "You know where you are in the form. You know when it comes around. Boom. You know where the head is. You, you know, know where the head the is. You do it again." Right. So it's a very, you know, it's a very 
thought out, but it almost sounds like they're just making stuff up. And you're like, well, they are, but we're like all within a form, and there's chords, and there's certain notes that trigger certain people to do different things. And everybody um, knows and is paying attention. And, everybody's and, listening, and 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 yeah. Exactly. So it seems like that's that's as much of a skill as the fundamentals of playing is the is the ear. Yeah. No, the ear. I remember studying um, ear training. Right, like literally that's had ear training classes. Oh yeah, uh, I didn't know that's. A good and thing. I was I was like, this is the best thing. Every musician sh- needs to have to know if they hear you know this note and then they hear this note, you you can you know what the what they are, how far apart they are, and then and then and then I got so deep into it, it was kind of crazy and kind of cool. The the teacher would play like a six note chord, you know. Not even like spelled out, like the ring. He would play oh. all the six notes, okay. and you have to say what all those notes were. Oh. And, okay. and, and it I just, it just comes through time. <laughs> it's practice. Well, yeah, you can practice your ear, your ear. You can t- train your ear to know what's happening. Mm. And um, that's a, some people that's can do that without ear training classes. You know, some people just know what it is. Uh, they know that there's a funky note in there, and they think it's this. You know, so you don't need school to, to know it. But I liked having that little moment in my life, which was four years, but at the time seemed like a long time. I'll bet. But when you're in it, you know, whatever. But when you're there, learning about it, it's like super beneficial to you because you're not going to ever study ear training after college. We were transcribing bird calls by the end. Advanced ear training, I, I did. <laughs> I was like stupid stuff. Are you stuff. fucking kidding me? No, no. Like you were like, okay, wait, listen to that again. You play it again. You were like, all oh, right, that's that's like you know G H you know G A flat G A flat you know and that and and. Because everything is a frequency, everything is a note. You slide a chair along the floor, and it goes. It's a so that's a note. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So like you know. Anyway, it's like there's. It gets so deep, like. With, 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 like, but do you use stuff like that? Like that? Well, you know, like absolutely. Or what you know? Like, well, I love I love when it happens when nobody knows it's happening, and only I know it's happening. Like I'm in an airport, and I hear a chair move, and then there's a song on. So I'm like, oh, that's the fifth of that song. Okay. You know? <laughs> You wow, know, it, you, know. It, you know what it sounds like to me, like, but like that just happens because you, you're, you're, you know, you can't unknow it. Yeah, and you've it's, been it's, trained that it's way. It's like a loop. It's <laughs> stuck. It's, it's kind of cool. It's, yeah, it's like a, it sounds like like back in the day, like the monks would go and they would learn like all the arcane symbols and and writing and all that shit, and like they were the only ones that knew this like secret code and mm-hmm. this secret language, mm-hmm. and it's. That's what music is, man. You, you guys are, you know, it, doing that. And fi- well, and finding that what you were telling me about this morning that I didn't know, but I was talking That's about true, like, yeah. cre- like, like creating, looking for, and creating sounds that don't exist Circuit that you hadn't heard before. Like, right. like yeah, yeah, rewire yeah. and looking for that sound. Like this works, this doesn't. Yeah, and I yeah. created something new. Right, like Joe. Joe's really good at finding the new thing, which may be the reason why this band is so popular because. He's found a new way to, you know, to uh, to jam and to get people's uh, attention. And he's always he's always like egging us on to f- find like the thirteenth note. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like there's like That's there's something that Joe doesn't want is this to sound um, predictable. He doesn't want it to sound uh, like anything anyone's ever heard before, which is hard to do with music because all music is derivative. There's only 12 notes, so there's only realistically <clears throat> yeah. so much you can do with it. But there's also not like it's a shame that any musician would put their hand up and be like, "What? I've done everything you I possibly yeah. can tonight," right. you know. But like, there is a way to to uh, to to get. To impress Joe, to, to <laughs> and to get his attention, and for him to like, and he always likes what we're doing. But you know what I mean, like yeah. for him to uh, really be like, at the end of the night, be like, "Wow, I really like what you guys, were, what we were doing there, it was really out there and really different." And we found that thirteenth note or whatever. So it seems like it would be refreshing like, for you then doing this, and then you go play your stuff, 
and it's mm-hmm. like you said. Oh, it's of, inside. Kind of, kind of, yeah, yeah, and you're and you're just like, <laughs> okay, I'm just sitting. Yeah, words are just, and it's just you know, have fun. four chords, the whole song. Fuck yes. You know, I'm gonna because you're sing. moving around too. I'm so. gonna get everyone else to sing with me, and it's just gonna be a dancey sort of, uh, very easy to get. No thirteenth notes involved, mm. you know. But uh, I, but I haven't. You know, I I love both sides of the coin. I love uh, completely out yeah. music. I love completely in music. I mean, I I uh, was talking to a friend of mine in Woodstock. And I was like, we were just talking about music and hit hit songs, like that kind of thing. And I was like, that's all you need, man, just one one hit song, you know, to like get your one song out there okay, to be yeah, known yeah. as a musician or one popular that song. That is true. And he's like, is that what you want? You really would want that? And I'm like, that's a pretty amazing feat to like come up with that one universal song that's you know, maybe not your favorite one that you wrote or whatever, but like people love it. Everyone knows the lyrics. Everyone knows. Singing well, to it. He's the guy that wrote that one song. I was like, yeah, I would like to be an artist that has that one song and it lasts forever. That and lasts people forever. cover it yeah. and it, it like, oh, gets he, handed down. Him, you know, I mean, so do you feel like you've written it yet? The, mm, I don't know. No, probably not. Okay, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll find out when out the album there comes already. out. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll but, find out when the no, new stuff comes yeah. out. Yeah, we'll see. But, uh, Stay tuned. Are you excited? <laughs> are you excited about the new album I'm coming so out? I'm so excited for the new record. We're like, we're out, we're like, we just started the, the push of the record, so the single's coming out next month, June, end of June, or middle of June. Uh, Let It Slide. Yeah. The song comes out. The name of the record is also Let It Slide. Okay. Uh, we're, we just finished the artwork. We're like finishing all the videos right now, so like the big push is coming. So yeah, I'm super excited, um, and it was amazing to work with Leon Michaels. I don't know if you've ever checked out L. Michaels oh, yeah. Affair. Yeah, yeah, music. yeah, Super cool. And I met him through Richard Swift, because Richard thought we should connect. Uh, I subbed for Leon in the Arcs, which was Dan Arbeck's project. Okay, that's how I met him. And then, and Richard was like, "You should work with Leon." And I called Leon. We made this record, and then we gave the record to Swift to mix, but he, you know, was going through a hard time in his life and unfortunately he passed away. Right. Um, and, uh, so is part of it mixed by him? No, oh, no, it okay. never got to him. No, it never got, I mean, it got to him, but he couldn't, he couldn't yeah. get to it. Um, but, um, so there was a little delay, which is why it actually took so long to get this record out. We were like mm-hmm. waiting on, waiting on Richard to, to do some stuff. But Are you just like, Chomping when that's happening while you're waiting, like, come on, man. Let's I I was, but I was also like, this dude is in a deep spot right now, and he's not right. he's not well, and 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 I want to help him, and everybody wanted to help him, but he he wasn't it wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. It was so sad. I was just talking to Dave about it because we passed the Cottage Grove exit on the way here, mm. and we we're just like, oh, Richard. Mm. So like so, yeah. now that music is so different, like you know, radio. Nobody really listens to the radio. You don't buy CDs anymore. How do you? How do you push the music out? Like, what what forums is it going I, out on? I, you know I, I mean? still do the traditional thing where I make a record and okay. then we sell our record when we go on the road. Okay, like at the and merch we, table and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we, right we, on. We, we sell more. Uh, I would imagine we we sell more on the road than probably. Oh, we, on right like, on. We sell a lot of records on the road. Yeah. People buy vinyl yeah. when they're at the show. Oh, yeah. That's, that's what's awesome. That's, that's what vinyl. Yeah, vinyls. Yeah, vinyls. They love it. Sure. Huge resurgence. I mean, it's been happening for years. but And especially with your music, the people that would gravitate towards you they, would be yeah. that. that uh, right. They, they, they want, they're, they're, they want they're the physical it. copy. Yeah. yeah. I and want that, something you know, real. So I've talked to some um, producers and engineers and record label owners who think the way, of, uh, the, the way to do it now is to just put out singles. You put out like a single a month for like okay. a year, and then you just put out the record later. But I'm like, let's yeah, just make the record. Yeah. And I don't know. I'm fine with making the record. We're gonna do like three singles. We're gonna do a single in June, single in July, single in August, and then the record will be out in September. Oh, right on. Yeah. So I mean, through through all like, you've known Joe all this time, playing piano when you were a kid. Like, at some point, you had to think to yourself, like, I'm not doing anything. Mm. Right? Yeah, I didn't even know when that point was. I, I, I didn't even know, even like going to college, I didn't know what I was going to do at Berkeley. I actually thought I was going to do film scoring. Okay. And got into film scoring for a while. And then I thought I was going to do music production and engineering, which is like being the engineer at the, at the studio, right. not being the musician, yeah. being uh-huh. the one that's setting up the microphones and working at the desk and, and, and uh, 
mixing. I thought I was going to do all that. And then somewhere along the line, I was like, wait a minute, the hardest thing to do is to actually do all this live. Like, you could sit in an editing, editing room and, and work on music for a film all day and edit your stuff together. And, or you could, you know... But, like, really the hardest thing is is to is to be in front of people and, mm -hmm. like... Do it live. Know it all and do it all live. Yeah. Like, that's very analog. And that's very, as analog as it gets, That's yeah. as analog as it gets. And that's also, like, you getting over whatever's in your head about playing in front of people. So you like challenge. Yeah. I you like, like challenge. brain food and, like, I like all that, that stuff. Yeah. And that, that's the real payoff for us, and I'm sure and for then, you, too, we hear, is yeah. sharing, like, on us being in the crowd. Yeah. There's nothing like that. It's the live music. Exactly. That, that People, being there and feeling that, yeah. what you're putting out. Yeah. Exposing yourself just like, here I am, man. Right. Just like, you make a mistake, hey, so what? Exactly. Hey, you keep going. Exactly. <laughs> Do you trip, like, before you, like, get nervous still? No. No? No. I don't get nervous. That's no. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I get excited, which makes... <laughs> That's a joke. Oh, yeah. That's which, an inside joke. Which, which, is, uh, <laughs> which is a nervous feeling. Yeah. Because you're excited. But it's not fear-based. It's just, not fear-based. Yeah. No, there's zero fear. Because it's like you're at home up there. Well, right. There's no reason to be scared. I mean, maybe when I was learning music, when I was getting started with, with performing, maybe I had some, some, some fear. But that was, that was a lot. Just going back to music education and being in college, that was just fear of getting a bad grade or, or fear mm -hmm. of like... You know, uh, not remembering the crazy classical song you're about to play in front of like 30 people in a recital room. <laughs> right. you know, yeah. that's, that's also like not who you are. But now I'm at a place where I'm like lucky to. At some point, you have to like realize that you're you don't need a teacher. You gotta own it, <laughs> and you have to just like own it. You know, yeah. I, I was going to school, and then I graduated, and I still studied with Joanne privately, and then I started getting my masters at Queens College. And and then I started touring a lot, and I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta, like, figure out how to be me and do what I want to do. Yeah. Oh wow. How you do you know, you're, that? Giving, you're giving me advice right now. <laughs> and by I was the way. like, I, I, I was like, I gotta trip. stop this. I gotta, like, I, at some point, I'm gonna have to. Uh, like trust myself and own my shit and do what I want to do. <laughs> this is the conversation yeah. we had in the car on the way here. You uh -huh. right, right, right yeah. now, bro. Cool. For real. Well, I mean, and at that time for me, I I figured out that I just need to be on the road. Like I was gonna, I was going down to New Orleans Jazz Fest mm -hmm. to play the Jazz Fest, and then my teacher was like, "Well, you need to finish your big band arrangement for whatever song it was. I forget, and you need to hand this in in time." And I was like. I think I'm done. Like I'm going, to, I'm going to play Jazz Fest. I'm going to go jam. I'm literally doing it. I'm literally doing, <laughs> you know, like, and school and music almost seems like an oxymoron. You know, it's not. No, I, yeah. You know, I hear what you're but saying. But when you are becoming an artist and becoming you gotta someone spread who those wants wings. to, yeah, you have to make your mistakes and spread your wings and, you know, make your first album, make your second album, make your third album. You got to figure out how to, like, be yourself and like deal with the um, criticism and deal with like your own personal how criticism. do you do that like because you're human and sometimes shit hurts you know like it hurts your feelings or makes you feel like right yeah, yeah. I don't you know what I don't want to be under that scrutiny again maybe something else yeah because you are you're when you're doing what you do mm -hmm. and and in some ways a lot of ways what we do like you're exposing your soft parts yeah a lot of the time man and the feedback can hurt Absolutely, I think I learned quickly, especially being in co especially being in college for music. I learned quickly that you have to have a, a suit of armor yeah. for that because there's no there's no right or wrong yeah. way. I mean, the Beatles, Metallica, like <laughs> yeah, you know, don't do that. Uh, DJs, rap, you know, like there's no right or wrong way to do music. I like there's that. no right or wrong way to do yeah. art to do to make sound. You know, um, yeah. so like. The way I dealt with it was just like whatever. I don't know. I I, I liked doing what I was doing. And that's all that mattered to me. So it wasn't even kind of like a, like yeah. It, it just I mean, kind of passed. When it's you... good to take criticism though. You need to take it and like use it. You know, but um, it shouldn't stop you. No. Yeah. Okay. No. No. Yeah. Fuck no. And it, I would think like that moment that you're talking about, like 
No, I'm not fucking going to play Jazz Fest, man. Like, yeah. Why am I going to stay here and practice at something that like I'm I've been already... practicing for a long time? <laughs> like, I need to, I need to also there... practice being a professional musician. Yeah. Like, a lot of professional musicians that's... didn't go to school for music, you know? So, that's like, what's your like a, wait, at, but that's such a Oh, yeah, thought. it was, like, full on, like, <laughs> I need to be out there now. Like, let's jam. Like, Skerrick, Mike D, let's jam. Like, John Modeski, let's play. Uh, you know, all these people in New Orleans, like jazz, New Orleans is a great place to, to, to be for that because yeah. people are so positive and, uh, and there is no wrong note in New Orleans. <laughs> 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 Everyone is so, is so forgiving and so loving and, and groove or, and total groove oriented music. I, I loved the meters growing up. Oh yeah. yeah. Amazing. Um, and I loved Hammond organ and, and stuff like that. Yes. So I, I, I I was always surrounded by people that were pretty positive, though I would ima- I would say, you yeah. know, right. And That's, were always supportive of us of what we were doing. And you never heard you can't do that for a living, like rah, rah, rah. I never heard that. Yeah, no. see that. Right I on. think that's why you ended I mean, up being who you are, maybe yeah, in a lot of yeah. ways. There's a lot of strength underneath. I, it yeah. seems like. Yeah, there's a lot of there's some some long roots. Yeah, it seems oh, like yeah. that. Yeah. Just like very grounded, and you seem super grounded, and that's a really awesome thing to hear because that's your your energy on that yeah. machine. You know what I mean? Yeah. That instrument, it's like grounding. It is grounding. It absolutely. is absolutely. And it, well, I will say this too, though. It also you particularly for me, like you have a, a certain way that you do what you do that, like completely removes me from thought oh yeah like that's a, that's a nice thing to it's, hear. it's fucking <laughs> yeah, intense. get out of here really, <laughs> it's really intense bro like the, the last time you guys played down here at Cuthbert I had a moment you were playing a keyboard solo at McDonald's yeah, at, yeah oh, McDonald's. at McDonald's oh right, right you were doing a keyboard solo and I was completely above myself there was something special standing, about that show sitting there like oh shit like and when I came back in I was like where am I? <laughs> what band is this? Like, like, but so that's why I said when, when we sat down, I was like, I finally get to say thank you. For that. <laughs> those experiences are really beautiful, man. The, they you know, shape our life too, yeah. you know. Like when, I'm sure if you've gone to a kick-ass concert yeah. and been like, "Whoa!" Look in his eyes. He's, he's been yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. I've been there. I've always thought I want, I want to be the person doing that. You're doing it too. That's nice. Thing. How did Thanks. you like it, know your sound? Like when you st- like because you're playing and practicing and all that. Like how was did you know your sound? I I now I know my sound now just by listening to other people, other piano players. Okay. Play, like Jeff Comenti and like. Uh, and John Modeski and hearing other piano players do their thing, I'm like, oh right, I have my own sound. Like I, I don't know, I didn't. Yeah. I'm you didn't realize this now. it. No, okay. I didn't realize that. No, I, I. Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's got to feel so cool. Yeah, it's got to feel like, like a oh, like that sigh after a long hard day kind of thing. <laughs> right. that, that's fucking me. Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> or you know, that's not me. You know, like oh, that's yeah. Him. yeah. You know, that's that's John. Like, and that's. Uh, you know, whoever. Uh, but uh, I, I, uh, yeah, it's really interesting. It's like, it's like being a painter and just knowing what paint, what colors you like. Like, there's certain colors that I like t- to have mm-hmm. and use. Yeah. And like, even just doing what we did with the duo back in the day was like, oh yeah, like I like the Hammond organ through a, a Fender Twin amp. Like a lot of people are like. You know, Hammond organ Leslie, this is what it is. And yeah. it's like, no, there's a way you can wire it so you can go into that thing, and then you could also go into these things and, and do this sound, too. Like, nobody would stop me from doing that. And I didn't see anybody doing that before. And so I wasn't inspired by it. I just heard that Larry Young, I don't know if you know Larry Young. No. So check out Larry Young. Right, okay. I'm write him down. Yeah, yeah. Write it down. So check out Larry Young. He's an amazing organ player. He played with uh, Tony Williams. John McLaughlin, he played oh, with okay. a lot of people. Uh, one of my most favorite records that he's on is on a Tony Williams record. It's called Emergency. Okay. And it's a trio. It's uh, Larry Young and Tony and John McLaughlin. But that's when I heard the organ sounding different. And I was like, what is that? And then I read that he put it through a twin. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do that. And then put all sorts of stuff in between pedals, guitar pedals and stuff. And then moving forward to my band and the in the piano and then I was like okay how do I put a quarter inch out on my piano I, and run it in the I want to ask you too, about that so. yeah because I heard you put pickups mm-hmm. yeah so how did you was that I just you <laughs> I don't know <laughs> no, I, I, tell you, I, like, I remember the moment we had this 
uh, we had this little circular, it's called a transducer pickup, a circular pickup that you put on like an acoustic guitar. Right. You literally, D Markley, you know, $80 pickup, you, you stick it to your guitar, and then on the other end is a cord that has uh, a quarter inch out, and you plug it into an amp or you plug it into a DI box, and that gets fed into the house, and you strum, and it's Boom. amplified because of this resonator pickup thing. Yeah. And transducer pickup. And you play it on a guitar and you're like, wow, this is not even working. Like, it was horrible. It's like a terrible pickup for a guitar. <laughs> so it sat in my desk for a long time. And I, I don't know, I was like hanging out in my studio in Brooklyn. And I was like, oh, I wonder what would happen if I stuck it on, the, on my piano. Because the piano is obviously a lot larger than an acoustic guitar. But it's a giant acoustic and guitar, And it's a basically. giant <laughs> resonator board. Yeah. So whenever we put it on the acoustic guitar, you could like barely hear it. So I put it on the piano. I'm like, well, maybe the pianos will be a lot louder. And, you know, so I literally was like, what if I do this? Stuck it on the piano, plugged it into this old sil Sears sil silver tone amp that I love so much that has really good tremolo on it. It's like, okay. you know, like, da -da 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 -da. and I plugged it in the the, plugged it into the amp, played the piano, and I was like, oh my god, it's working, and it sounds so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I like, you're literally the just playing at that literally point. Literally, it's just like, this is amazing. And then, yeah. So it's evolved from that $80 pickup to like a $300 pickup, that like three of them that like sound really good, that all run into these pedals that then run into an amp. So, so are you, while you're playing piano, as a guitar player would stomp, yeah. You're kind of doing the same thing? Same thing, yeah. The pedals, are, I just hit with my hand because they're just right here on the piano. And then, yeah. You're a wizard. I'm half wizard. Yeah. Half yeah. Wizard. yeah. yeah. You're a wizard. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. That's, frequency is the coolest thing. Like, what's cooler than that? <laughs> like, being able to affect... What's cooler than frequency? Yeah, people with sound, like... It is pretty mystical because if you were to watch... A concert without any sound. <laughs> what oh, the hell is everybody? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are they doing? How are we talking? How are they talking to them? What is that? Yeah, it's very, it's very odd. Who was it? Somebody recently said that they said that our favorite part. We know we're having a good night when you look out and everybody's catching butterflies. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's like, holy oxygen. crap! Or uh -huh. yeah, yeah, it's just everybody's like, yeah. That is amazing. You know, in the moment you're you're working, you're like you you're providing. So you're you're not as as loose as the people in the audience. I mean, you are uh, loose. I mean, like you're not just observing. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I taking wish it in. It's participation. Yeah. yeah. Like I wish I could just be out there observing, but I'm I'm like making it. creating. Yeah. So like it's yeah. there's a little bit of a a little bit of like a, a little bit of a chain. You know, you're a little bit like Ooh. stuck because you're like you you, you have to. You're still you're providing this this wheel of energy that's like yeah you can't look at your friends and yeah, go I'm going down to the front yeah. rail and spin <laughs> off into the crowd. Yeah, I'm gonna go out there and I'll be yeah. there. So time is moving a little slower for us on stage than for people out in the audience because we're we're working a little bit. Yeah. You know, but Thank you for working and yeah, providing yeah, that for space, sharing. Man. I love it. I love doing it. Yeah, you're welcome. Because yeah. for real, like. You know, I was um, saying this to, to the guys. I was like, when you go to a concert, you wear special clothes. Mm -hmm. You take time off of your regular day, whatever that is, work or the kids get a sitter or whatever. It's always special. Mm -hmm. And right. to the musicians, their whatever life they have, they're leaving to go to that same venue. Yeah. So every there's expectation inside of this right. time, this two-hour or three-hour window. Yeah. And everybody's showing up to get jazzed. Yeah, excitement. Oh. We don't do that anywhere else in our society. Right. Well, well football, yeah. you know, well, like sports right. or yeah, some yeah. shit right. like that. Right, right, right. But yeah, Not just just yeah. where everybody's coming. But like, yeah. that's a super. It's special. Well, we're we're fortunate enough to be in this entertainment job, you know, this business where yeah. people are coming to escape. So we already have the benefit of the doubt. Like they're but, already yeah. happy to yeah. be in the con to be in the venue. Mm -hmm. So. We, we, you know, it is a bit of a benefit of the doubt. But, you know, you do have to provide the party all night long. And yeah, you, you do. Have to make sure they're s still escaping versus, like, being like, this is boring, I'm out of here. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, you know, it's we're also there to escape our whole day of 
sound checking and get even just driving to the venue, all this stuff, like, so. So is there something that you do, like, pre-show? Like, you know, any kind of, like, ritual or your thing, to how you get together and, like, yourself together or the band or whatever that gets you jazzed? I know Joe or, likes to, to meditate. Um, Dave likes to practice a lot. He's always working on stuff on the bass. Um, I just, like... I just like to have I, I don't know I, I do really. so many different things. No, I don't have us. I don't have a specific thing that yeah. I do. I like to like I'll have a little bit of tequila. I might like smoke a little herb, but I will like I don't have like just one chill thing. your mood out. A yeah, just bit. chill out. But I also have done the complete opposite where I've like with my band, we're in the green room. We travel with our own record player. We have a bunch of records. We throw on records, 45s, and we... 45s? We dance, and we, like, get excited for our Pump gig. it up. Yeah, we're just like, yeah. <laughs> we change into our whites. I gotta ask. Well, yeah, what's, what's the, the whites? The, yeah, I what's love the whites. whites. Yeah, that was just an idea. Like, why don't we just wear white, you know? And is the, the face, is there a name for the dude? I, I got that at a store in Chicago. I have no idea. Actually, I've, I finally you found... name him. <laughs> I have a name. Not, <laughs> that's his no name. It's yeah, no yeah, name. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that just came out of nowhere. But, I like it because that white really does elevate energy. It it's crisp and clean, yeah. and it like it's a focal point yeah. right to you. Yeah, it's nice. I like that everybody in the band, including our sound guy and lighting guy, they like to both they participate. Yeah, everybody, yeah. Wear, everybody's wear, everybody wears right white, on. You know. So where did the we were using our time for fun thing come from? <laughs> That came from uh, where using time for fun came from a sound check that Joe and I were having years ago uh, when it was the duo, and we were deep in the tour, and we were sound checking, and we were losing our minds a little bit, you know, as you do if you're three mm -hmm. weeks on the road in a station oh. wagon. Oh my god, and, uh, in the station wagon. Yeah, and, and we were we were sound checking and, and we just you know, we had probably had a couple beers and sound check and we were just really, really loose. There was probably an opening band that was just sort of standing there like waiting for us to be <laughs> done sound checking and even the people working there were like, What are these okay. guys doing? And and we just started we kept on messing around at sound check and then I was like I was like, oh, wait, Joe, we need to stop. We're wasting our time. And I was like, no, we're not. We're using time for fun. You know, oh, and it just oh, came, that's cool. came from that moment of like, dude, you know, we don't have to, we don't have to stop. We're having, we have a crazy life playing music all the time, you know, traveling from city to city. And we finally get to our place where we can sound check and like loosen up after the long drive, staying in some shitty hotel room or something. And then we're having a long sound, a long sound check and, and feeling like we're wasting time but I was like no we're not we're using time for fun so that's that's, a, that's awesome that's we very have a, appropriate we have a thing that we say so we can do it the fun way or we can do it the boring way <laughs> exactly we can do it There's the fun, fun, it, yeah. do it the fun yeah. way man like yeah. we, well and the guys too we just interviewed um some of the guys from Rumpke Mountain Boys mm -hmm. and they were like we just like having musical fun that's mm -hmm. what yeah. it is and I was like I I've not heard that, but it's so true. Mm -hmm. Mu using music for fun, like how yeah. great is that? No, it is. Yeah, it's amazing. Now, I had a question that it keeps going back to the duo because this is one of our good buddies we're meeting down here tonight oh, with his yeah. wife for it and stuff. Because it was a, well, it goes back to 2006 when you guys were doing the duo, and then you end up doing Grab. Yeah, with Trey and Mike. How did that come about? And what, what, I mean, that that's a that's a that's a very <laughs> interesting and amazing well, Mike, music that came out of it. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. I um, I know that Mike was trying to get Joe to join his bands when the duo had started. We put out like a, a self titled release. And then we put out our record called Darts, which was, which was just live from like the Knitting Factory. And then right around that time, Mike was starting a band and was sort of courting Joe to be in his band and I don't know, really know what happened with that it didn't happen obviously and but we kept in touch or they kept in touch and then Mike would come see us Mike would come see our shows in New York and occasionally he'd come up on Worley and like play with us I remember like he jumped up on Worley and played with us and my parents were at the gig and they were like, who's that old lady that shit? Because <laughs> 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 he had like curly gray hair and my parents were like, I'm like, remember, remember that band Fish that he wanted to 
like I wanted to go see so much in high school, and he never let me. They, they took me a couple times, but I didn't really go see him as much as I wanted to. But um, that's I'm like, funny. that's the bass player in Fish, and they were like, oh my god. But it was just because he had leaned forward in his, in his long gray hair. I was like, but, yeah, uh, so they, he would come to see us, and then you know we kept in touch, and then we would play as the three of us, Mike, Joe, and myself. We played as a trio here and there. There's something about the trio setup. Yeah. That's, there's a magic there that's different than anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Really. We played as a trio for a while, and then there was a summer when Trey, I don't, I don't really know. Well, I don't really know what happened, but I guess Mike was like, I've been playing with these guys. Should we just play with Trey? You know, should we just all play together as a quartet? And I guess that's what happened. Wow. I, I really don't know how that happened. So, like, a lot of things, it just happened. It just happened, it, man. It, 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 just being in the scene. Circumstance yeah. and yeah. all that. Yeah. Being in the scene and knowing Mike having uh, us on, or the fact that we were on Mike's radar was cool. And then when, you know, when it came time for those guys to figure out what they were going to do that summer, I guess we just, we were like, you were on the list. You were on the list. Yeah. So, right you know, I, before we go, I, like I was saying earlier, like you have continued a conversation that we were having in the car today, mm-hmm. and dude, you, you guys like you probably hear it all the time, but like this, what you're doing with your thing and with J Rod, all of it, like it it affects us. It means mm-hmm. something to us. It's it's real, and and for a lot of people, like this is church. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like this is the thing for a lot of us and it's just really cool to to be able to sit down with you and like to hear where you're coming from because it adds another layer to that whole thing for us it definitely does as, add as, as fans of the yeah. music and you mm-hmm. and you know what I mean it feels a little bit more personal yeah, yeah. And yeah. yeah. it does yeah. but I just want to say thanks because you taught me something today and oh. you didn't even know you were doing it <laughs> and it and it was really cool man like and it's that that thing of just letting Universe kind of go through you, trusting like yourself. Man. Well, like yeah. you, trusting you, yourself thing. Yeah. Like, like, hey, man, I'm, I'm awesome. When you see someone <laughs> live, live see in their yourself. dream, you yeah. realize it's possible in your own life. You know, when you're living, well, when you it's see happening doing to it. you, mm-hmm. like, when your dream is happening and it's coming true, mm-hmm. and you're inside of it, sometimes you can lose sight that that was the dream that is happening. Yeah, me. yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? Well, I it's what, regular. I love what you, you said now. in the car. You're like, you're yeah, like it's, it's regular. I was like, right, I got to yeah. fly to Sacramento yeah. and then I got to get a tour bus and then we're going to play in the amphitheater. Yeah, yeah, which one's dreaming? And I'll, you know, yeah. like, and then I'll, do, I'll be home on Mon- I'll be home Monday night and then, you know. But if you yeah, told 16-year-old like, kind of, Marco that shit, right, you would have blown his mind. Yeah, yeah, if you, right, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's, become, it's become normal. Uh, and but it's it, it, it's 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 nice to hear. Yeah. So well, hey, you you yeah. should hear it because yeah. you're up there, we're down here. Yeah. There's and a big even disconnect between totally, us and, and even us buying your shirts and mm-hmm. your merch mm-hmm. and tuning in to your YouTube and all that. Yeah, yeah. You're not we hearing don't know. it. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Know. yeah, yeah. So. Exactly. So like, just you doing your fun job that you love to do is like helping us figure out our shit or just breaking loose of our mundane or just energize whatever it is like you guys are providing that and it's so cool to be able to say thank you and to like see you up there kicking ass and like you get it marco like (laughs) it it makes it like i said more personal and just it makes us want to root for you even more like fucking write that fifth sixth seventh album i'll (laughs) buy it like you know just supporting yeah you're all providing the church for us to congregate tonight we got a whole bunch of our friends and listeners they're all meeting tonight we're going to be in the lawn area just dancing our asses off sweating yeah Yeah. having fun just it's a party i know i'm all about it well thanks marco man let me know that i'm doing the right thing yeah man even though you didn't need to hear it (laughs) just hey another little confirmation man yeah thanks guys cool brother thanks
What's up, Jasper? What are you doing, buddy? Hi, everybody. We're back from the gorge, and we're we're in the house because they are killing it outside with the with the construction. <laughs> it sounded like they were building an armoire in our living room this morning. <laughs> so it was a long weekend. Did you have fun, PJ? I had a lot of fun. Yes. Is this Jasper and PJ's trip report? Yeah, this is Jasper and PJ's trip, <laughs> trip report. So <laughs> we're just relaxing. PJ's going to go to the airport here in a little while, and uh, we're just kind of debriefing and, and talking about all the stuff that happened this weekend. And a lot happened. <laughs> it was definitely full of um, experience out there at the Gorge. It was a uh, a lot of walking and a lot of talking to really cool, amazing people and uh, really intense shows and afterwards intensity and a lot. And PJ flew all the way from New Hampshire, New Hampshire yeah. to come hang out with the No Simple Road family. And I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you. This was, uh, it, it's, it was no problem and I appreciate you inviting me in the first place and inviting me into your home and letting me uh, go to the show with you guys. Um, we were talking about it a little bit before. This was essentially a pilgrimage for me to come see this band at that venue and to be able to be with you and the No Simple Road family and, and just experience that together was just everything, just, just the added extra bonus because I don't I could not have asked to be with better people or better friends or better family to go see that and experience yeah, that show. It's fucking it was sweet, dude. Absolutely magical and what I took away from this weekend, especially from that Friday night show and the things that I saw and experienced and the emotions I felt, uh, that's never going away. Uh, you you had talked to me outside about like um you took a picture. Yes. Tell, tell, um, tell them about that because they weren't there, uh, <laughs> or they were and they so weren't with you. Been, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And those who know the, that Friday night, it felt to me it could have it could have been the drugs. It felt to allegedly. me <laughs> allegedly uh, that that sun just did not want to set. Like it just it hung there and hung there and hung there, and it did not want to go down behind the mountains. And I remember turning to you, going, "Even the sun doesn't want to stop." Yeah, right, this I remember. Thing. I remember. <laughs> Uh, it's like five more minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you, know, the, you know, great first set, and I'm sitting there uh, next to Jake, and he goes, hey, go over to the side over there. You can, there's a different view of the canyon. Just, you know, take a walk over to that side. And I was like, all right. Uh, and I journeyed you know, uh, across that hill sideways, which is not an easy thing to do. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Darwin. You don't. You agree that it's not an easy thing to walk across that hillside. Yes, he does. <laughs> no. Um, but once I got there, it was just the perfect visual of sun and clouds, and I went up and I took a picture and like openly started weeping. Uh, not just for the beauty itself, but uh, I'm colorblind, so I have hard time seeing uh, certain shades of reds and greens. Um, oh, but wow. My wife a couple years ago gave, gave me the. These are they're called enchroma glasses, and they help me see a shade of red that I can't see on my own. Oh, wow. And viewing that sunset through those glasses, oh. it's coming up again, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. It's one of, the most, one of the most beautiful things that I have ever seen, and it's, it's you know, several days past now, and even just thinking about it and talking about it just wells me up again. Wow. It's, it's amazing that, like, you know... There's a lot that goes into going to a show. Like you, you plan the trip and you book the flight and you buy the tickets and you get the time off of work and you do all the shit and then then you got to get there and then you got to set everything up and then there's like a lot of intention that goes into that thing and you you're kind of like you know the experience is going to be great right or you expect that it's going to be great. But you don't know what's inside of it for you. You don't know what's waiting, what thing is going to happen. And then you get those kind of gifts like that, like that moment. And that is what it's all about. I mean, 
yeah, the the music is the thing that drew us there, but inside of that magical space that's created when that music is playing, those kind of magical moments are happening for thousands of people at the same time. So that, like, to me, like maybe that's part of what elevates the energy and and brings it up like that and makes it feel the way it feels is that people are being overwhelmed with emotions from from their planning and their journey and their pilgrimage across the country or right. wherever it is and it's all like this explosion that's happening at the same time and it's just like this ripple effect of beauty and happiness that's happening and i mean There's also the other side of it, too. Like, there's people that are having hard times. And we were kind of talking about that this morning a little bit. And I think that's important, too, because there's balance out there. Everything's got to be balanced. It can't just be one thing or, or it would be counterfeit. The universe doesn't work like that. Right. Like, it's... Experience isn't black and white. It's It's all of it at the same time. So it has to encompass all of that and I just know for us like as a family we're just living our life doing our thing and I just happened to start recording it you know what I mean mm -hmm. like it, it, there was not like a grand plan at work or anything it, it was just me recording it and putting it out and like to have you come all the way across the fucking country to hang out with us and and do that thing, it was really surreal for me and for Mel too. Like, there was a moment during the show, like, I, I was super high, and I, I think it was during Dark Star, and I turned around, and like, you were there, and Jake was there, and Nate, and his wife, and Alex, and his brothers, and like, I was just, and Kyle, yeah, and I was just like, holy shit, man. Everybody that's here, we know because of No Simple Road and the family. And it, like, it took me out of myself for a minute, like, completely jarred me. That feeling of, like, wow, we really are a family. And it's, and it's growing so fast. That was something Jake said. He was like, bro, this crew is getting fucking big fast. And, when you're sitting on, like, you've now been here and sat on the porch, like, yeah. it's, it's, it's so comfortable to be here. yeah, it, it does, really does. but well, it doesn't feel like that when you're sitting out there drinking coffee and holding a mic, like, we're just on our fucking porch, dude, <laughs> but then you show up at the show and there's this crowd of people and it was just, it was overwhelming for me too, dude, and I just appreciate you wanting to come. And, and do that with us because those moments like you said are special and, and it creates a bond with people that you can't explain like like we've been through an ordeal together <laughs> do you know what I mean yeah like the walking and, and fucking heat and getting sunburned and <laughs> trying to get back to camp after the how, tell them about after the show Friday night walking back to the camp? Uh, a bunch of different things. First of all, you just if you get up to one point and you, the, the hill kind of dips down and then goes back up towards the parking lot and you can just see the just massive sardine squooshed people <laughs> all the way up and I, I'm looking at oh, yeah. them and I was like, anybody ever see the movie Joe vs. the Volcano when they're climbing up the zigzag and it's just the people going up so they can all jump or so Joe can jump and that's what it just it looked like it was just this path and everybody's kind of penned in these corralled in these fences and like leading you out and then just to kind of pass the time people just someone started singing Bohemian Rhapsody and a few more people joined in that was the coolest people thing people were harmonizing and hitting the high notes and then it would die off and then someone else would take the lead and bring it back, <laughs> back again Jasper you like that? Yeah? He doesn't know about the Friday night show. No, he wasn't. Jasper wasn't there. And that was another trippy thing. Like, Saturday night show, I was sitting next to Mel with my grandson there. And he was singing Terrapin. Where is he? just smiled when he said it. <laughs> yeah, man. It, 
those things are are really amazing and hard to put into words and it's really to me like I don't know it's worth all of the other stuff the sweat and the blood and tears that go into it like I can't think of any other thing that we could have done together that would produce that same right thing like result yeah like huh we're gonna go to NASCAR and have no we're gonna go to a basketball <laughs> game no no, well, no. I would go to a basketball. But I'm just saying, it wouldn't. It wouldn't do. I would go to a basketball game with the DJ, but it wouldn't do that same thing. And I think it would not do the same. thing. No, like, I've been to a bunch of basketball. <laughs> games. I work for a basketball team. I did. It does not do the same thing. Yeah, I. I wonder too. Like, it's it's been going on for so long. Like, it started in '65. And they opened the door to that place, and a bunch of people walked in and started doing their thing. Mm -hmm. And then the dead kept going until Jerry passed. And for a little while, it kind of went underground and hibernated, and then fairly well happened, and this explosion occurred. And looking around at the show, like you can see the generations. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I see, I see myself in the lot at 19 years old playing my guitar, you know, dirty from being on tour and exhausted and loving every minute of it. And it just goes, it like shows me that it's never, ever going to stop. I mean, there's people there that are like, taking that magic and doing their thing with it and seeing that it gives me like hope for a future because I used to think like well when, when Jerry passes away or, or Bobby or whatever like this thing is done like there's no way not now no no so I, it's, I don't right think now. I don't think Grateful Dead fans would allow it no, die. like you said, it'll go under. It'll hibernate. It might it might dim down for a bit, but it'll always it always come back. Mm. So you're going home today, yeah, and back to work tomorrow. Back to work tomorrow, but I don't I don't have to go until tomorrow night. How do you feel? I feel great. I'm tired. It's 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 been a lack of sleep, and my body uh, feels a little sore from. Uh, even everything I had out on that lawn uh, during the shows, but like, but just that—that that is that's a small price. It's oh, I'm a little sore. That's okay. If yeah. I take that home, I can sleep on the plane if I home too. So I don't <laughs> mind. I can, can get a lot of sleep. So, well, I know that we're going to make a pilgrimage back east in the next year for sure. And no, oh, you have a home oh, and my home. So thanks, man. And just know that you and your wife and kids are welcome here anytime and we love you PJ you you came here and it was like you'd been here forever like you rolled with all the shit that went down like a champ <laughs> and it was just really cool to to have a friend a new friend in the family and a brother yeah and it, even for me it felt like even when we last year started corresponding mm -hmm. uh, it didn't take long for me to feel a connection with you and like this, like same thing. Like I, like, I know all already. Yeah. Not to it's, mention, you guys look like brothers. Yeah, we do have yeah, similar beards. We kind of look alike. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what that is. I think I don't know. I wonder what that is. Like since doing the show, I've experienced it a lot, and I I can't think of like I think about the time before you No know, Simple Road. <laughs> And I don't really remember that happening too often. Do you, Mel? What? Like meeting people like PJ and feeling like that. Like it was I mean, not no. common. I don't know. I think that um, us as a family, we kind of have a little bit of magic in the 
um, in the people department, we really luck out meeting amazing people everywhere we've gone. We've been married for a long time and it's never been, I think we've never had shitty people in our life, maybe misunderstood people or maybe people that are um, pushing buttons, but never anybody that's been shitty. We've been very fortunate mm -hmm. and even more so um, with No Simple Road, um, I just think that maybe your connections are a little bit deeper because you're more invested. But if we think back at when we lived in Vegas, the people that we met that were our friends were our family also. Oh, yeah. No, no, I'm not totally. I, you know I, what I mean? I, like, yeah. I'm just, I, I'm meaning, like, I guess I just, I love people. I love bringing them in. And then there's also something special about the connection specifically through the dead. Like, it's a, it's an added like benefit you know like there's these awesome already amazing people and then you add the dead and the love for the dead into that and then it, it it's like a lotus flower more beauty like opening up more um connections more things to have in common more more family yeah and it, i think maybe too it's the i said this before but like the having shared experience you understand that person mm -hmm. on a a psychedelic level. Like we've we've been to a mountaintop and shared an experience together, whether we've met each other or not. You know, by right. by being there and doing it, and it creates something that is unique. Like Mel said, it's like that lotus. Like it just unfolds. Yeah, and I think you doing this podcast and putting your energy out there is it just expanded the amount of where that energy reaches and to, and to whom, like, you know, if you meet somebody, you, like, sometimes you immediately know, like, even if you meet someone, like, you know, hey, this is my friend, blah, blah, blah. And sometimes you're like, that, uh, yeah, I, like, you just immediately, mm -hmm. you're with that person, you connect with them or whatnot, or sometimes it's just like, I just get a weird vibe about that person, right. I don't know. And I think that you, by doing that podcast, you're drawing in all those people that are connected to your energy in a positive yeah, that way. That makes sense. Uh, so, and, like, I saw it just walking around Shakedown, you know, the people come up, no simple road, and they come over and give you a hug. Like, the more people that listen, the more that's going to get out there, and the more that gets shared, and it's a positive thing. It's it's wonderful, and... That was a beautiful part <clears throat> of being at the Gorge was having our family there, like, our literal family, having our NSR family, and then meeting everybody else who happened to listen to the show or heard about us while we were there and it was just uh yeah it was kind of overwhelming not negatively just no. overwhelming like breathtaking kind of like the the sunset or climbing up to the top and seeing the gorge for the first time it was i think people have the ability to do the same thing take your breath away like oh my god like you're amazing you're freaking sweet and looking around our camp and there's so many myriad of people there and different ages and everybody was sinking up. Like everybody sunk up. And that to me was like, it was just amazing. That part, the getting along part, the, not that we weren't going to get along. I didn't, you know, I didn't have any um, question about that, but just how well we jived together mm -hmm. and how friendly everybody was and how genuine everybody was and just how, you know, I'll get this for you. Oh, I don't have one of these. I do. Like, it's just always a beautiful you know, those guys. That, I mean, they, the guys that park next to us <laughs> weren't they even block, with, yeah, they block, they block the, the sun. sun for <laughs> us. <laughs> then we didn't. We forgot to pack a frying pan. We just we, forgot to bring it. Yeah, and I'm like, hey, you guys have a frying pan? Yep. And here's hash browns and here's bacon. Like, <laughs> that's rad. That's really cool. And. To have that feeling and, like you're saying, meeting the people that said hi to us, I can't even count how many times it happened. And, I mean, I, I have an understanding that there's people that listen to the show. I'm not stupid. Like, I know how many people listen every month. But it's a number on a computer. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not it's physical not bodies. It's not people standing in my driveway. And then going there and having that happen is really weird. It's really fucking weird. Like it feels awesome, and not like a, not like an ego boost awesome, but like. We were talking about it, the payoff. Yeah. Of hard work. 
Yeah. Like <clears throat> if you're a carpenter, you're building a house, and then the foundation's there. Well, there's no house yet. It's just a foundation. Then next thing you know, you see the frame come up, and you're like, oh, my God, it's taking shape. And then the roof comes on, and then the siding, and then the windows. And, like, I feel like every time we do another show or have an event or whatever it is that we have these additives, additives to the house that we've built. And it's a beautiful home with many rooms, and it's very comfortable, and it's homey. Mm-hmm. And homey. that's... <clears throat> it's homey. <laughs> so homey. Yeah, I... I, like I said, it's not like an ego trip. It's a payoff for hard work is a really good way to explain it. That's really cool, and and it feels good too to know that like the work that you're doing makes people feel good. Yeah, that I think is like, whoa, really? <laughs> okay, sweet. I'm gonna keep doing it then. Like, I mean, I said this so many times but I didn't plan any of this so I'm like figuring this whole thing out as I go along like whatever you hear on the show is unfolding in real time and the experience of meeting you and meeting those people in the lot and it's taken it to a new level for me like really deeply seated inside me of wanting to do this and I was telling you this morning I read we got a letter from Maddie is her name and uh, I'll read it but not right now um, but like I have those moments of doubt I have those times when it's like um, you know I'm not I'm fooling myself with this thing or you know, this isn't going to go anywhere. You're, you're wasting your time or whatever my head trip is. And every time I feel like that, like I'll get one of those letters the next morning. Just like never fails. The universe is like, nope, nope, nope. And so adding that on top of everything is just, there's no question anymore. Full steam ahead. And so thanks, PJ, for helping me get there. No, I thank you for allowing me in your house and, and <laughs> inviting me in and, and, and allowing me to spend time with your family. It was one of the most amazing things in my life that I've experienced at this point. You know, without not including my children being born. Yeah, no, I got you, man. I got you, man. And, you know. yeah. <laughs> it, it, like I said before, it just feels normal. It, there was, I suffer, believe it or not, from a little bit of social anxiety mm -hmm. when I meet people. And... In my head, I trip out sometimes, and there was none of that with you. Like, it was just chill, sweet. And when we were high at the show, I get you. Like, <laughs> I get you, dude. And we're we're together. Like, it's it's really fucking cool. Yeah. So I love you, brother. Love you too, man. Thank All you. right, guys. We'll see you in a minute. I don't know what's going to happen after this, so I'm not going to try and bullshit you and get it wrong. Whatever happens now is going to happen.
Osiris.